And it looks like we're live, Lori. We're live. Officially starting in three, two, one. <laughs> this is last Saturday live on the Motorhome Experiment. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> and what the heck? They've got some ad running on our. Uh... <laughs> Subtle, what Subtle, Subtle. the heck? Kevin. Wait a second. Well, yeah, we, uh, we got to. Hey, guys, everybody. We are in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. It's yeah, actually, uh, it's called Los Cabos in the very south tip of the Baja Peninsula, like in very southern tip. And it's called Los Cabos, that's mean the Cape. So it's like, because it's Cabo San Lucas, San Jose del Cabo, Cabo Pulmo, and there's even more Cabos I cannot remember. So that's what, call, what it's called Los Cabos around here. Yeah, lots of Cabos. Cape. Yes. So I'm going to throw my glasses on here. Can uh, can everybody hear us? I was trying it's to. It's working. Hi, guys from Wilderness Lakes. Moving the mark. They're on. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Cool. I think it uh, sounds like maybe everybody can hear us. Nice. Well, it's actually about sunset. If I actually move this way, you can see the sun is right yeah. in my face. So right it's about face. sunset. And I just want to share. It's like uh, just random stuff. It's like, you know how if you have come to Mexico, you know, there is vendors on the beach all the time. And actually, I have new sunglasses. Thanks to them. I have some Ray Ban, like literally Ray Bun, Ray Bun, like. yeah, it, it Ray Bun sunglasses. They're not Ray Bans. <laughs> I actually it's got a new set funny. too. It's pretty funny. I needed a new set, and they brought them right to you. That's my kind of shopping, really. I really thought I wouldn't like that kind of thing. They I come know. buggy on the beach, but it was kind of cool. I needed sunglasses. They walked right by. Oh. Throw you a cheap pair of Croakleys or whatever the heck they were. Yeah, you have like the yeah different look. Yeah, I it's a see that it looks kind of like the Oakley O, but not quite. <laughs> so we'll call them Croakleys. And then we know. made a deal for two, so I yeah. got my my Ray Bans, Ray my Ray Buns, yeah, Ray Buns. <laughs> so yes, welcome from sunny southern Baja, Mexico. Some of you guys might not. There's whales jump. This is going to be distracting. Oh, it's there's, just this, the bay. Is you have right to show here, them the view a little bit. And there's there's whales literally blow holes outside of our balcony. And but you have to show to them see. the view. Let me show you guys the view. Just not take them to the sun, so they are gonna. It's gonna shine in your eyes, but. Let's try to do it. Tell me to put this back. Okay. Right there. It's so bright. It's hard to see it like on the screen, but all that super bright area is all ocean. You can see a little bit of the ocean a little bit there. And then right there is a whale. Can you see it? Hopefully everybody saw it. No, it's too hard. No, it's too hard to see it on screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, hopefully somebody saw that. I don't know. Let me know when we're back in, uh, in spot again. A little bit to that side. There you go. All right, cool. You're good. Hey, guys. Now I'm trying to kind of like read. Get caught up a little bit. Uh, just yeah. so that you guys know, Kevin and Laura and Tom and Faye are still up in Las Barillas. We are here in Cabo San Lucas, and you can see this beautiful room that we're in. We would not normally stay in a room like this. So this episode is brought to you by Richard and Cheryl Hampton. Because this is Richard and Cheryl's timeshare unit here in yes. Cabo. And they loaned it to us for a week so that uh, Lori's family could fly in from to the mainland To do a family Mexico. vacation. Yeah. Just basically to do a family vacation. Actually, the Hamptons are about an hour from here, an hour yes. and a half. But they were not going to use their uh, timeshare this year because they have their puppies with us. And their puppies, they bark a lot. They're schnauzers. So if you have schnauzers, you know they bark a lot. So they can use their timeshare. So they actually... Uh, yeah, let us use it. And it has been like a one week vacation, isn't it? Yeah. I know most people think that we live in a permanent vacation, but it's not quite true. One kind of sort of, but not really. We just, our yeah, house moves. Our to house different moves. Places. But we still have to work and we still have to do laundry and we still have to do all that stuff. So the, this was a little bit of a break of all that. Yeah. And having the family make it a lot better. Yeah. But so even this, oh, by the way, the, even this cherry Dr. Pepper, which I've never had cherry Dr. Pepper before, also brought to you by the Hamptons. So thank you so much, Richard wow. and Cheryl. I'm feeling like we owe them a lot. We owe them a lot. Yes. Don't, did we and, say that on, don't say that on video. Sorry. Damn it. And also like, I'm not drinking wine tonight. I'm actually drinking a beer. This is a Mexican, Mexican beer. It's like a uh, Negra Modelo. Oh yeah. You can see there, but it's not open, babe. So I'll well, let you do that. Is this uh this isn't a twist off? I don't is it? think it's a twist off. No, 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 no. Do I that. couldn't do that if I tried. Like my dad was Where's your iPhone? I can use that. No. no. My dad used to be able to do that and he messed up his teeth because well, of that. He he teeth. had to go to the dentist because of that. So it's like no that. So we're so excited we're here. As you can see, 
no sleeves, no sweater, no nothing. It's like we have been feeling like this has been summer for us. So it's just so nice to be in a warm place. Definitely Paul and I, we're like, we love our warm weather and we love our beach. So this has been amazing for that. There it is. Oh, I thought that was a bottle opener. Oh, no. Yeah, it, it is. is. Okay, Come cool. Down. All right. Well, I guess I could just leave this. Yeah. Uh, the, there's soup on the uh, there's soup on the, on the stove. Yeah. Stove is that good? That's is good. That okay? I have my timer. If so you see worry. a fire building behind us, us just now. yell out, wave your hands and stuff. <laughs> okay. First, I'm gonna have who to we take got up. online. We got. I, a lot. My, I know Kevin and them. Yeah, I'm gonna there. take off my glasses because I need to read, but it's gonna be hard because I have like sun in front of me. But it's like uh, from Tom and Anna. Met you just outside of Algodones. How do you choose Mexico car insurance? How do you know it's going to pay out if needed? Well, you are not going to know if you don't know if your regular out. insurance is going to pay out if you need it. <laughs> like even back in the U.S., I know lots of people have gotten an accident. Yeah. And then there, my son, for yeah, example, say, Sean. my son's car completely wiped out. And his insurance claimed that it was the other guy's insurance fault. And the other insurance claimed out $6,000 car got zipped for it. So... You don't know. And do you yeah. know down here? No, but it was recommended to us by Geico. Uh, Kevin and Laura got theirs by a company recommended through Progressive. And Richard and Cheryl got theirs by Baja Bound. No. Nothing in life is guaranteed. Uh, good Sam. Oh, Good Sam. That's right. Good Sam. Yeah. But BajaBound.com is a place that you can go check all that out. And it looks very legitimate. And hopefully it is. But you don't know. Nothing in life is for sure. You just uh, kind of roll that dice, baby. Nice. And it's true. It's like we even didn't know. Like we yeah. literally researched that probably a week, week and a half before actually crossing the border. More like 48 hours and before within, crossing the border. Yeah. Well, not the research part. Yeah. Now within literally 24 hours before crossing the border is when the whole deal about the insurance was done. Yeah. Uh, from Tom and Anna as well. It's like 58, 58 Tommy. Uh, it says, how are you filtering fresh water? Are you, are you filling your tanks for just showers? Yes. We're actually filling our tanks. Every campground that has fresh water. And although it's like supposed to be safe to drink water here, not even as Mexicans we do, I have to say. Right. So we use it for, it's okay for showering. It's okay for brushing your teeth. I know a lot of people that have their little bottle of water for, for brushing, brushing their, their teeth. teeth but it's, it's not acid, guys. It's water. Yeah, it's water. So it's pretty okay. Now yeah. for drinking or cooking or coffee. We actually have our Berkey and that it has been an amazing gadget while in Mexico, not only traveling, we love it traveling, but in Mexico, right. we have not been like going to buy bottles of water or the right. five gallon bottle of water. Right. All that no, stuff. we haven't been doing that. And but I will Berkey. say even Kevin and Laura, they're just basically, I think kind of what you would consider triple filtering the water. They're using the big blue filter to filter the water coming into the RV. And then they're using their RV filter system that they have under their sink to filter the water and they're drinking mm -hmm. and doing that. And, so far, none of us have gotten Montezuma's Revenge or any of that stuff. So, um, yeah. And if any of you guys don't know what Montezuma's Revenge, it's when you drink something that doesn't agree with you and it's coming out both ends. So, none of that has happened. And we've been here for three weeks. Oh, my God. What? TMI. TMI with TME. <laughs> no, but that's what it is. People want to know. we got to tell them the real scoop. Yeah. I mean, so far, it has been worked. Like like a charm yeah, the Berkeley. No the Berkeley. Even we have it here in the condo. Yeah, we do have it here in the condo. We have it here in the condo for everybody. We brought it up. The RV is literally parked right around the corner from this building. And it was oh, you should tell them when we arrived. Hilarious. When we arrived, they were like, what are you doing here? The guy didn't know what to make of the RV at the front gate. They had this beautiful front gate here. Didn't know what to make of it. And I said, no, we're, we're staying here. And he's like, oh, okay. And then he's on the radio. Uh, radio and everybody. By the time we got to the building, everybody in the building knew that this RV was coming in to here to stay. So that was it was pretty entertaining. Yes. And now it's it sitting out in the parking lot. And yeah, it's it's all good. I have to say the only bad thing about this, it has been that it's not a pet friendly resort. So no. we have been keeping Aussie. That, that's another fun story. And I'm gonna say this because I know none of the people here follow us. Yes. Probably. Nobody in the building follows us now. So and we'll be gone tomorrow. Yeah, so who cares? Yep, right. So basically what we're going to try to do, because we knew it was not a pet-friendly resort, it was to sneak in Aussie and just not ask for room service. 
And we saw him the first two nights. Yeah, two nights. And then after that, we're like, okay, let's take him to the RV. And then we asked for room service, right? So they can, not room service, uh, cleaning the room. Cleaning service, yeah. Cleaning service. So anyway, so I literally put my alarm at six in the morning. So nobody, nobody will be around. Nobody will be up. Most of the people here are on vacation. So they're not up at that time. I go, I'm carrying Ozzy, like wrapping a blanket. And he's like, and he's actually behaving going towards the RV. <laughs> And he's like, and as soon as I go down the stairs, there's this security guy coming. I'm like, uh-oh. He's like, it looks suspicious. I'm have like, I'm carrying this blanket, right? And I'm saying, as soon as I'm going to pass the security guy, Ozzy pops his head up. And he's like, I'm like, hello. And the guy immediately turned around and he's like, is that your kid? Is that your kid? It's like, what's your like your room number? And what's your villain number? And Lorena pretended not to speak Spanish. Spanish. <laughs> like because... His English was extremely broken. So I was like, yeah, he cannot communicate with me. He cannot like ask me too many things. So I was like, no, just follow me. Just follow me. And we're in an area that's like a secluded area of the villa. So you have to pass a gate to the other section of the resort. So I was opening the gate. And after five questions that he did, he kind of like gave up. And he said, okay, I'm just security from this side. From there, I'm not security. So I just leave. And it's like I put us in the RV. And since then, he has stayed in the RV. We make sure he's okay every day and we make sure like he has food and water and the RVs vented and cool for him because we're around here anyway. So yeah, it has yeah been the weather's great. been really perfect for it. So Ozzy's had his own <laughs> giant cage, the RV by himself, and we just check on him day and night. Yeah, we have a few people we know actually. John Sennessy is like Chris Belofado. He's like, hey guys, what's Ted happening? Danman is like, it's so nice to already see in the chat people we have met on the road at some right, point. Right, right. So it's very, like, very it's cool. Really cool to Except see. Except for that. Chris Balafato. Why? What? Why? Oh, did I say that out loud? No, Chris, I love you. You know I do. Um, no, it's great having people on that we've met on the road. I know. I love it. So I'm going to remember if you have any questions, put them in all caps so I can catch them pretty quick. It's like, otherwise, I'm going to scroll through it because we're trying to keep up with the chat. And sometimes it's very hard to keep up with the chat. So just as a very friendly reminder and nice to me, please put your questions in caps, in all caps. Capitals for questions. Yeah. And then make sure you turn that off after you ask your questions so you're not just yelling in that. Kevin Miller, we're, yo, yo, we're, yo, Miller. we're on the ocean eating guacamole and drinking margaritas and limonada. Awesome. Margaritas. Wow. I'm surprised. Very cool. They are in Las Barillas right now, and it's beautiful up there. We're going to actually wind up going back up there. <laughs> I know. I mean, we're having a hard yeah. time right now living in this area because so we see everybody. And I'm sorry if you're one of those. Is like one of those people. It's like I see like some of you are like in very cold weather. And we see that on pictures. We're like, yeah, we're not ready for that. No, not so, quite. <laughs> not quite ready for that. Like we're staying around here. And we're going to get in, we'll talk a little bit about, about Mexico and especially Baja Mexico in a little bit after we're done asking some questions. So if you have questions about Mexico, then uh, especially Baja, because we don't really, we've never RV'd over on the other side, but questions about Baja, please feel free to ask. We know that the biggest question, let me address that right now. The biggest question is safety. And my response to that is that is just unfounded. There are parts all over the United States that are not very safe to go to, but nobody questions that. If we were to go to Chicago or Baltimore it's more or Baltimore, Memphis, Memphis uh, Detroit. New Orleans, nobody says, oh, you shouldn't visit America because we live there. But because there's so much uh, information about stuff going on in Mexico, here's the thing. Violence sells, guys nobody's reporting that thousands of airplanes take off every single day. Nobody goes out today. An airplane took off. There's a second, there's a fourth, there's a 10th, there's a 1000th airplane took off today, but one crashes news is all over that. And it's a little bit like that in Mexico, not saying Mexico doesn't have its issues. And Lorena will tell you that mm -hmm. somebody mentioned that as a, as a Mexican citizen, what do you have to say? And we'll get into that in a mm -hmm. second because okay. people want to hear your, your take My on that take. as well. And I think that's important. Yes. But my take as an outsider, I was terrified to come here that when we first met, mm -hmm. terrified to come here. But in the 12 years we've been coming here, nothing has happened. So Or seen anything. Or, or have I seen anything? Yeah, there's military checkpoints where guys and machine guns get in your coach. So what? It's just a checkpoint. They just get in to make sure that we're not bringing guns in from the United States because, believe it or not, folks, 
most of the guns that are here in Mexico, they came from the United States. So they're trying to prevent any more from coming in here. And that, that's it. There really hasn't been anything that has been scary at all. Not at all. So again, that's my take. The news is going to report the bad stuff. The news very rarely reports the good stuff. We have had a phenomenal experience here. Richard and Cheryl Hampton. Richard was very, very hesitant about coming down here at first. They just, they booked another month in Las, uh, Las, Las Barillas. Barillas because it was so amazing and they had such a great time. So that's my take on it. I, I just think that most of the things said about Mexico are unfounded, just not, and just not necessarily, not untrue, but. Well, some of them are untrue because they make it seem like, Oh my God! It's like it's like war zone. Like literally, I have heard right, that like it's right, a war zone. Right. Like it's the wars in Afghanistan and all this. And Paul, like going through his research because we get start getting all these comments. It's like okay, I'm gonna research more behind it. Like what's going on? And Paul realizes like there's so many tourist areas that are like twice as dangerous as Mexico, but they don't have even a red flag or anything. Right. Like Bahamas being one of them. Bahamas is horrific for tourists. Like they literally target tourists there. So if you're off on a Bahamas cruise and you're going to NASA, be careful because in NASA, they actually target tourists and rob them at gunpoint. Yeah. That doesn't happen down here. They don't want to bother the tourists. Violence down here is cartel stuff. It's drug related. If you're going to buy drugs, if you're going to try to sell drugs down here, you're definitely going to run into an issue because if they catch you on their turf doing their thing, you're it's going to be ugly. So don't do that. But Bahamas, Jamaica, places like that, there nobody mentions that. And here. they are more dangerous for tourists than Now, with Mexico. that being said, I will rather try super dangerous. Don't come here at all. Right. Don't will, come here. You will take all right. our RV spots. So. <laughs> yeah. There's not a lot of RV. Don't do it. Don't there's do not it. a lot of RV parks down here. So it's not very much space. So we're probably going to come back next year. So you guys should just avoid the area. Really? That's that's <laughs> our take. So so give it to us as as because there's some things about Mexico that bug you. So as a Mexican well, here's the citizen. Thing. What, what As a Mexican city, again, it's like born and bred. Culture is totally different. That's something that he has been having a hard time adapting to some of the culture. Uh, like my sister's boyfriend just well, new fiance. My sister just got engaged. Yes, announcing, did. it's like she they got engaged here in Cabo, but uh, her fiance is from Hungary, and he mentions a lot of the same stuff that Paul does, and he notices this. and like the traffic laws, like it's like the stop. Ooh. The stop signs are just like a suggestion. Stop signs, red lights are <laughs> kind of a suggestion. Just literally slow down and keep going. Yeah. And that's about it. So all of that stuff. So now I have been for so long in the U.S., I understand why some people, if you're not used to that, they're like, oh, my God, this place is just lawless and all that stuff. It's just a different way of living. With that being said, I know there's some stuff wrong with here. And it's like included. For me, the biggest thing is garbage. Like, it's just so embarrassing as a person that I want to show my country and how beautiful it is. And you know how beautiful it is. I mean, we're here. It's like, and then driving through places where I guess the landfills are not very well done. So garbage just flies everywhere or people seem people just like dump garbage out of their car. It's like, I think that's one of the embarrassing things that we have gone through that embarrasses me as a Mexican. I hope like I was never raised that way. So it kind of like, I feel bad every time I see somebody doing that and or like other people from other countries seeing that so that's a, a negative for me people what they're not used to and i noticed that is a uh, people's hustling like people here in mexico if you don't work you don't earn money if you don't earn money you don't eat there's no such thing as some government uh programs like there's in the no US. unemployment there's here. no unemployment at it and anything like that so people hustle here yep so they have to they want to sell you anything and everything because they need to earn money to pay their food or the rent or whatever but some tourists don't understand that. Then they just feel just like overwhelmed by this many people offering them stuff. Like you go to I the was. beach, you go to the beach and the sunglasses and the blankets or like food or drinks or all these things. Most people get overwhelmed in that. Here's just a way of life. I, I got overwhelmed by it. At first, it really yeah. bothered me that every corner I turned around, somebody was selling me something. But I also appreciate the hustle. So now like, you do. Now I do now because do. I understand these people are are they're in survival mode. So they're just doing whatever they have to do to survive. And here's here's the the funny thing about that. Here's the rub. The yeah, go check the soup. The rub to that is how often in the US do you see someone standing on a corner doing this with their hand out? 
just asking for money because, because I'm homeless, because I, I got a hard break, because I, I don't have what you have, give me money. That doesn't happen down here. You do not see somebody on a street corner here with a sign saying, I, I need you to donate to my family. Here it's, I'm selling you oranges. I'm performing on the street corners. You'll see guys juggling fire on the street corners. You'll see guys riding unicycles and entertaining you on street corners for money. You'll see people selling flowers and roses and knickknacks. And, and then when you're on the street, you see people selling tours and stuff like that. So it's all about the hustle and they're just trying to feed their family. I don't have a problem with that. There's doors slamming around no. here because we have all this open. Yeah, I went for a sweater because it's starting to get chilly. Just before the the light goes out, you should now show them the ocean now that there is no sun. Probably Try to show people, them the ocean again. Yeah, All right. I think you guys can see it better. Some people that came late, where are we? We are in Cabo San Lucas right now. We're about to show you the view from our balcony. Let me know if that's... Right there. Can they see it? Yeah. Down over in here, that area over there, that is actually Cabo San Lucas Bay. That's Land's End, yeah. That's Land's End. That's Land's End right there. That's where the Pacific meets the Sierra Cortez. And right now you see all the boats there for the sunset. It's funny. Yeah, they're all on the sunset. So the opposite side of that little mountain right there at the end, that's the Pacific. This side of it is, and all along in front of us is the Sierra Cortez. This is a little bit of the resort down there. That's the, uh, the pool in the back. This is the rest of the resort over on this side over here. So hopefully they can see that. Where are we? Back in the... Lori, are we back... Where it needs to be. Yeah, good. All right. So somebody said it's like, wow, I thought you could only fly to Cabo San Lucas. It's like you should talk about the road a little bit. Uh, flying to Cabo San Lucas is definitely the easiest way to get down here. <clears throat> there are two roads until the halfway point in Cabo. You have, I'm going to try to do this the exact opposite. Let me see. Well, I can't see where my hands are here. But anyways, uh, from you guys looking at us, the East Coast, let's say halfway down is Mexico five. And by halfway down, I mean a quarter of the way down is an actual road. And the other quarter of the way down is a goat path. <clears throat> that meets up with one that starts, and that starts at Mexicali El Centro, which is um, a couple hundred miles, I think, east of San Diego. You can also start in San Diego. And there's a few other ports along the way. We won't get into all that, but in San Diego, California's Pacific Coast Highway, Highway 1, continues down into Baja, California, and it's number one all the way along the west side of Cabo, and it comes all the way down into the bottom, or west side of, sorry, west side of uh, Baja, California, and it comes all the way down into Baja uh, Sur, which is South Baja, and down into Cabo San Lucas. So yeah, you can drive Highway number one, the Pacific Coast Highway, literally all the way down here. The road is extremely narrow. I actually turned my mirrors in, actually the driver's mirror, I turned it in a little bit because the road is so narrow in spots. It's a butt clencher. Like every time a truck goes by the other way, you're like just hoping that you don't hit. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you have anywhere to go because it's literally the white line and then the road disappears. And most of it is if you were to drop off that right hand side of the road, you're in a world of hurt. So it's an extremely narrow road. Uh, pretty decent condition for the most part. There's a couple of construction areas. Uh, so be it. I mean, construction happens. So there is a couple of really, really rough spots on one coming down. But for the most part, not too bad of a road. Now, again, we say don't travel that road at night. Here's the reason why. It's not a safety thing. You could drive that road at night in a car. The problem is there are cattle. It's open range. So there are cattle wandering around all over the place and they eat right at the edge of the road because for some reason the grass grows right along the edge of the road and they can wander up onto the road. So if you're driving at night, you got to be very, very cautious of cattle or, or wildlife, goats and things like that that happen to be wandering around. There's no fences for them. They just kind of wander. So uh, because of how narrow they are and the cattle, we would say don't do not do it at night. It's just just not worth running into it and ruining your coach. It's just like they really take like free range cows to a whole new man. Whole new level, yes. It's like, <laughs> it's like free range literally, like on the highway mm -hmm. free range. 
It's like everybody's complaining about the weather. I'm sorry. It's sorry. Like, yeah. The weather here is pretty awesome. <laughs> like, see, it's cool at night. Like, you see Lori's in a sweater at night. It's a little yes, cool, it's but it's probably time. mid 60s. Well, I'm, we're just coming from the pool. So I still have the <laughs> wet bathing no, suit. Like, just slap them in the face. So, oh, sorry. Sorry. We're just coming from the freezing pool. cold pool. Oh, it was cool. so horrible. Yeah. Horrible. yeah. Those pina coladas. Awful. Yeah, the pina coladas. Awful. Mm. Uh, but Chuck, so Chuck is in the room, and the Snowdens are in the room. Oh, all hey of guys. them said they're freezing. Some of our quartzite peeps. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> so he's like, it. That's amazing. Like yeah. I said, the fact I, that everybody. I will say, Chuck and uh, Randy and Debbie, you guys will be absolutely ecstatic that you didn't drive down that Highway Five with us because, yeah, you would have beat up your coach a little bit. The only thing that we, the only thing that we can see wrong is we lost that cabinet door, which. Hey, our old and coach, that could happen anywhere. It. No, we didn't we lose didn't it. It just fell it. off. And but then wait, that video, I don't know why he didn't turn on the lights. It's not like the lights were totally. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't either. <laughs> Dramatic effect. <laughs> do, 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 do. <sighs> so I'm going to bust into some pistachios here. Oh. Somebody said about like, right, uh, you does your U.S. car insurance get put on hold while you're in Mexico? Unfortunately, not. Uh, I, you know what? You well, probably we could. We don't know. I say because we probably could have said, "Hey, we're not going to be traveling here. Can you just kill it for?" And you never asked four months, and I never asked. Yeah, because so, there was literally a, a you know last minute thing. Okay, for us, but, that means we're overpaying then. So we're probably overpaying. You could probably put because it on hold. I know Tom and Faith that they're from Canada. I can remember their their insurance. They actually put on hold, like the one in Canada or mm -hmm. the U.S. And they start charging over here. So yeah, they're having those savings in one you know side what? and charging over here. We should call them tomorrow and see if we can do that. Say, hey, we've been out of the country. We're not using your insurance. Thank you for being, you know, looking out for us. <laughs> Somebody said. Chris and Brenda Mills. Um, what? Have you had a chance to see one? Like they're talking about the rooster fish. Uh, have you seen one come towards the shore with their fins popping above the water? No, we have not. A rooster fish? Maybe we did see those the other day because we thought they were manta rays. I don't know what they are. I mean, I don't know. Now no, we're going to have to Google it. It was different kind of manta rays, like different kind of rays. Like Charles has a, the right name, but I don't know what's the right Mobile name. Mobilus. Mobile, yeah. Mobile arrays. So, Mike McKinney, would you please say modelo again? <laughs> we have to learn the right pronunciation. Modelo. Modelo. No, not like that. That sounded Italian. Modelo. She modelo. says it better. Okay, say it again. Like, I asked, like this, for example, is a negra modelo. That's so, a black modelo. Yes. Yes. Frankie is. How is the food there? Oh my goodness, it's horrible. Another reason why you shouldn't come here, guys. Don't come here because the food. <laughs> it is insane. Like oh, it's, it's so, good. so good. It's just like it's just fresh food, like literally fresh food. They they cook with fresh ingredients. So it just makes the food taste totally different. And just simple <laughs> ingredients. It's not even like hard to do some of these things. Yeah, a lot of these little restaurants, I don't know if they, you know, it's because they can't afford to stock up or they don't have huge freezers or what it is, but the, most of them literally buy their produce and stuff fresh almost every single day. So you're going in and buying stuff that was purchased usually that day, maybe even the day before at the most. It is just, it is just awesome. We have not run into a, what I would consider a bad meal yet. Mm, a simple meal like some stuff well there's some simple stuff simple. we're vegetarians like, no so. no like crazy stuff happening but it's like a lot of stuff so good like, but you so said good. the shrimp and things were good you do, you've been doing some yeah. shrimp yeah i mean it, i've been doing some seafood while down here and it has been amazing like a lot of vegetarian stuff it's amazing so it's like that's one of the things i really miss about my country is mm. the food because even in u.s when you see restaurants it says authentic mexican food it's just like kind of like saying like RV resort. Like the word resort is just thrown <laughs> so much. The same with authentic Mexican food. It's just why is that so though? Much. Because you think that it'd be authentic if a Mexican started the restaurant. I don't know. Like it's very Americanized. It's because they can't find the same like, ingredients. Really. I feel like it's very Tex Mex food versus actual Mexican food. Mm -hmm. So, but if you come here, the oh, one man. thing that's going to spoil you is the food. It's just yeah. amazing. And the, the uh, fruit down here, the mango and stuff. Oh my God. It's so good. Oh, it is so good. I just miss my papayas. Like it's funny because last night we went out and buy, bought a papaya for everybody's breakfast this morning. By the way, everybody's gone. Already oh yeah, the when I'm talking gone. about everybody, I'm talking about their family. 
and it was a buck fifty for a papaya. Well, in the U.S., I can pay like six dollars, eight dollars for a papaya that size. So yeah, a, food is so cheap too. Uh, Produce is so cheap. A papaya that's like we were six of us, twenty-four and inches long, all. and it's just a buck and a half. What are what are? Um, I'm not sure if that was twenty-four inches. <laughs> Yeah, well, this this is <laughs> that's six inches, so I figure that's about twenty four inches. And then, um, oh my god, how much are uh, how much are um, the little green things? Avocados. Uh, how much are avocados? They're cheap too, right? Oh, it's like forty pesos. It's about two dollars a kilo. Yeah. So it's pretty cheap it's versus so cheap. what a dollar a kilo. Oh. It's like Southwest Joy. Hello from New Jersey. We just pick up our Pleasure Way Class B, like sort, and are making plans to head out <laughs> on the road. Hope to meet you guys someday. Hopefully, it's like Hope to meet you as well. Fingers. Congrats on the new coach. That's awesome. Yeah, wait, Bernie. How is it now that you're full time YouTuber? I don't know. Um, that's it's an, scary, really. That's a question for him. Yeah, it's really scary. Quite, what? What do you mean? It's a question for me. You're a full time YouTuber too. No, I'm a full time trader now. Yeah, you're a full time trader. How's that going? Not very good in Mexico. There is like we have been having a hard time. Self with service has been sketchy. Self service, Wi Fi, all that stuff. It's just like bare minimum everywhere. Yeah. It yeah. has been like I think the first time was Loreto and then La Paz. Loreto was amazing. La Paz here. T Mobile yeah. rocks. Like we're we're streaming on T Mobile tonight. The Wi Fi in the room is about four four to five five meg up and down. If you know what that means, but. Uh, I, I was, wasn't was sure if we could stream on that, so I threw on the T-Mobile. The and T-Mobile is 20, 20 meg down and I think 8 or 10 up. Good. It was it was awesome. So, But a full-time YouTuber is yep. it's scary. We don't know how this is going to work out yet. Uh, I'm not a spring chicken who does um, prank videos, so we don't have a huge following. And that doesn't seem to be uh, climbing in as fast as we would like. But I need to post more as well. Uh, family's gone. And so, again, I've been saying this for, what, a year? Oh, yeah, I'm going to post more. But uh, I'm not saying anything. I'm staying away from this. Right. Right. <laughs> so we've got some stuff in the can. We are going to be doing more Nosy Neighbors. We have some of that stuff uh, I'm ready to go. i about that. How well received, by the way, was Nosy Neighbors. I yeah. mean, it's a segment that we thought we would put it out there because that's what, how we feel about the nosiness out of it. And everybody is like, yeah, we want to see more. We want to see other coaches. And by the way, somebody says, Oh, you're just showing small ones or your class A's. It's, it's always going to be people it's bitching. It's not the truth. It's no. like we're going to show a little bit of everything. Even there's something that we not necessarily will buy for ourselves, we still want to show it because it might fit your needs. I mean, our needs are not your needs, so we want right. to show it all. With that being said, the next couple are going to be class A's, but we are going to yeah. we are going to try and hunt down some some trailers and some towables and some. No, we're not going to do tents, but towables <laughs> and things like that. I'm yeah, the tents are. You know what's inside of a tent? Nothing. There's nothing inside of a tent. Yeah, there is. It's There's called, a air it's mattress. It's called roughing it. Roughing there, it for you is, is Motel 6. It. It's like, oh, please, don't blame me about that. It's like dead cam rocks. It's called Spanish and proven in Mexico. See. Si. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing you know how to say? No. See. Si. No. Mi esposa es mexicana. Pero estoy aprendiendo español. Oh, that's so cute. Even though it was with like green but yeah. it was so cute. What room are you in, sir? Dos siete cero nueve. Right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Actually, I have to say, my mom and my sisters were impressed with how much Spanish he's already speaking. Yeah. It's like he's like for me in short sentences, but very well sentences. Pronunciation is pretty good. So it's yeah. like they were pretty surprised about it. It's like. What would you like for breakfast, sir? Quesadillas. No, that's not true. Quesadillas. I got it. <laughs> Donald Santiago, is diesel readily available where you are traveling at? I would really have to get Tom and Faye to answer that. Uh, yes, is the short answer, but they have an older coach, so they're not using the DEF fluid. And I don't know. I'm an old diesel guy. Like when I drove trucks, we didn't have DEF. I don't know what that even is. 
Um, but I know that a lot of the newer diesels require DEF. Um, I never saw that down here at all. I think it's old school diesel. We have not paid attention. We really have not paid attention because I guess like there is like a, a certain year of uh, diesel pushers that is like if you're below that year, you're okay. If you're above that year, it's like you're not okay in Mexico. Not because it's not available, it's because it's hardly available. Right. But right. again, it's not like we have been paying attention, but we're actually traveling with another, with Tom and Faye, that they have a diesel pusher and they haven't no had any problem but that they have a 2001 right. uh beaver monterey it's, it's an older older coach, it's an older coach now yeah. if you can use def with older diesel you're good to go if you just, you're just gonna have to stock up on def before you come down and i don't know what that requires i i, I haven't looked into that at all but diesel as as a whole if you've got an older coach everywhere there's trucks up and down this this road and you can buy it at every almost every gas station gas station that you can buy gas at you can buy diesel mm -hmm. so not a problem i like this question it's a funny question hi paul how's retirement life treating you that's from jonah senesi <laughs> retirement yeah um i'll let you know when i get there i haven't retired yet yeah, we're not retiring again. I think that's a misconception because mm. you are on the road and you travel full time. You're retired. It's like, no, it's like all of us, we work. And I, I would say right now I am not working as much because we're in Mexico. Right. For the last, but for the last once week. Once we, we are in the States, it's like I'm going to start working. And it's like uh, Kevin and Laura, they work. And it's like we are we're all like full-time workers i mean we full-time jobs so it's like we are doing our thing we don't just travel and party i, I think like sometimes comes across like that in the videos that is right. all we do but it's like we're trying to show you the fun part of what we do is like i think nobody will like to see if we're saying like for five hours in a chair just working right right it will get boring i can show you five to eight hours a day sitting at a keyboard but that's just not not fun and there are days where uh, like Lori's family, the first day that they were here, uh, maybe the first day and a half they were here, they went into Cabo San Lucas and went and explored and I was here editing videos. Uh, mm -hmm. so then, and trying to figure out what we're going to do next and yes. how we're going to grow the channel and do all that stuff. So, uh, retirement is a little bit of a, yeah, it's not, it's not retirement at all yeah. for us yet. Yeah. Because we don't, if we tried to retire right now, we, we would be in a world of hurt. We don't have the money. In a, in a savings account to be able to not work ever again. That's just no. not a possibility. But working towards it. But we're Seriously. but we're gonna work towards that. Well, hopefully. Uh, or I'll be a Walmart greeter. One of the one of the two. Uh, that's always an option. I have the talent for that. Welcome oh, to Walmart. No. Here's a cart. See, I could do that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, oh wait. Uh, bienvenido a Walmart. I could do it in Cabo San Lucas. <laughs> You have to say it in English. There are so many English speaking people here. Oh, that's here. right. There's so <laughs> many English speaking people here. That's another thing I will tell you guys. Los Barriles and a lot of these La Paz, Loreto, Cabo San Lucas, there is a ton of expats here. Like so many of these communities and are full of English speaking people. A lot of the people. Mexicans that live here, they're, really, they're bilingual, they they're, speak English because yeah. they're so used to like uh, talking to yeah, English yeah. speaking people that they will be bilingual. Yeah. I think that's why this area is so desirable because people can communicate even if right. like, because I think right. one, that's one of the things people are so afraid of, like uh, not speaking Spanish coming to this country. And I will say on the way down, many people didn't spoke Spanish, but everybody's so nice that even with sign language, you can yeah. like get the message get across. Through. But once you're down here, a lot of people speak English, yep. so there is no problem. Yep. Yeah, it was just the very, very middle that, that yeah. was a little bit tougher, but yeah, you, you could get through, no problem. Pamela and Jim are in the house. Go Pam and Jim, they're working on their uh, GMC, GMC motorhome. They've got a 70 something GMC motorhome. I'm it's sorry if I don't badass. know the year, pretty badass. And they're in the process of putting a tankless water heater in it. So I'm jealous. And now Lori's gonna be telling me why are we not getting I a tankless? I want one, I really want one. Yeah. It's like Tom Kimball, how are the bugs in Cabo? The bugs, this is, this is where outside right now. I know I'm getting chilly already. No, like no, I'm getting sorry. cold. There we go. I'm getting cold here. We can we can always move in and shut the doors if you want, but that's gonna take a little bit of little Le while. Lisa W, do you run our your air conditioning when you guys are boondocking? So do we run our air conditioning when we boondocking? haven't we haven't run our air conditioning in I don't know so how long. long. So we spent long. the entire summer in Alaska and did not um and then we've been in 
you know, 60 and 70 degree temps for the last mm -hmm. couple of months. I'm so trying to think the last time we ran it, but I cannot even think about it. I probably need to turn it on to make sure it still works. But no, yeah, uh, and know. if we had to, we would we would run our generator. I I can probably with our solar, if it's a bright sun sh shiny day, I could probably run one of our uh, air conditioners on the solar, but I haven't even tried it yet. If we need to run an air conditioner, we're in the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah. And look, yeah. I agree with that. But, but we if had, we had to, we would throw on our generator, run the generator we if we had to. Got caught on places where we have to run the air conditioner when we were in uh, Florida, Florida, and other banks as well, mm. because it was hot and it was the spring, but it was hot. So, but it, that was a long time ago. I but mean, yeah, I mean, if we had to, we would. Yeah, if we have to turn on the generator and just run it. Mm -hmm. Always Gallardo RV strong. Would you travel alone or still prefer friends with you in Mexico? That's a great question. Travel alone in a heartbeat. I would come down. Well, and we're going wow, to. Wow, damn, Kevin, Laura, Tomafe. <laughs> no, I don't mean I don't want to. I mean, we we traveled as as a as a group. We in traveled the United as a group, Stoops, but I think the, the question States. I guess is geared towards like if you do it again, will you feel safe or not traveling alone? I guess like the the question more geared towards, and I will say is like. It's like actually we yeah. feel safe alone. We don't save like we our, yeah. We our friends Richard safe. and Cheryl Hampton came all the way down here by themselves. And they really don't speak Spanish. Like you're very, very basics, like where is the bathroom or water, or stuff mm -hmm. like that. And they made it all the way south with no Spanish and by themselves. Yep. And, and newbies. And, at RV and they're World. newbie RVers, yeah. yeah. Um proud of Richard for making it down here on those narrow roads. And on the way up the group is going to get broken up a little bit on the way up. And we're probably, because we're going to hold back a little bit, we're probably going to be by ourselves on the way up for the most part. Uh, Kevin and Laura, and I think Tom and Faye are coming down into um, Cabo San Lucas over the next few days. Uh, we've got some cool stuff going on. So uh, in a closed RV park, so that's going to be interesting, but um, they're coming down. Richard and Cheryl are continuing up to, La Paz and then Loretto, we're going to catch up to everybody on the way up, but there's going to be bits and pieces where we're traveling alone. I would travel alone here in a heartbeat. Not a problem. Yeah, I know. It has been such an amazing Absolutely trip not so a problem. Far. Like we were going to roll down quick and kind of like slow down on our way back. And it's like, we're really slowing down because we're liking it so much. We're actually staying longer than we actually thought. Yeah. And for me, that was pretty crazy coming from him because he's the one that actually suggested it it's like because usually he's the one that will be it's time to go back home time to go back up to the states and this time he's like let's slow down let's stay longer so i was surprised mm -hmm. about it so patrick's on the move hey guys hey, it's like have you seen the flying rays there at cabo they're amazing not I, here in cabo but up in yeah, los Barillas. They were everywhere up there. Las Barillas. Um, I don't know if they're the flying race, though. They're well, the I mean, Mobila. The Mobila yeah, race. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty amazing because, they, yeah, they come out of the water and they just. And like, they, they yeah. look like a, a bird that's struggling to stay above the water and then bam, back in again. At nighttime, they must jump straight up because you can hear them slapping like you'll just hear <laughs> over and over again. And then sometimes you hear that coming from Kevin's RV. And um, what? <laughs> you hear it coming from Kevin's RV. Are you there? Is the question. <laughs> so, Charles Del Toro, how is the solar holding out in this trip? Well, our batteries have literally been at 100% every day. Every day. Like, day. It's, it's just been sunny every day. So, um, and then the last week we haven't been using it, but we would, I think the lowest we've gotten down was about 70% since we left Quartzite. Now, we did add two more solar panels on and that's something that i'm in the process of putting together the solar series now so that's another reason i need to slow down a little bit so that i can record and because i want to write write some stuff and record some stuff so that we have it both in uh text and in video so to be able to do that I, that's one of the reasons why i need to slow down but the solar has been absolutely spectacular kevin's solar has been rocking uh tom and faye got four panels installed while they were in quartzite their stuff is rocking it, it changes the game for boondocking. And I will say one of the issues with RV parks here in Mexico is high voltage. The very first park we checked was 135 volts. That's not good for your electronics, especially your higher end electronics. So we haven't plugged into electric. 
at all, like in, mm -hmm. in Mexico, we just have it. Now that's not an option for everybody, but it's something to be aware of. Will it hurt your electronics? Maybe not. I know the Hamptons have been plugging in. I don't know if their IntelliPower stuff has stuff built in that is keeping their stuff okay. I don't know that. Or maybe their um, uh, surge protector. I don't know how any of that stuff is really working. I just know at 135 volts for long periods of time, not great for electronics. So we just haven't plugged in. We've literally used our solar uh, and inverter the mm -hmm, whole time. For the most part. Yeah. The entire time, yeah. Yeah, the entire time. So it's doing great. Yeah, it's is doing great answer. is the answer. Now, Short answer. with that being said, well, we were in Quartzsite. Uh, Paul added another two panels that added another, what, 350 watts? 350, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have a total like over 1,000 right now watts on our roof, and that has made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Before, we have to more like be more strategic about using most of our power in the daytime, be careful at night, all that stuff. Right now, we have not been careful at all, pretty mm -hmm. much, and we're still going strong. So that yep. has been pretty good. Yeah, been really good. Randy Flinders, Randy and Kerry from Las Vegas. Hey Hello. Our Vegas peeps. And he's like, overall, do you think the cell coverage in Baja will allow us to work full time in an RV? I know that, yeah, I know Randy actually works full time. He has an actual job. I don't know what exactly like you need to yes work no. on. I would say, like, I will be more strategic about what places to go in Baja. And I think we mentioned that on the videos about yeah. like there is something coverage here or there is not and all that stuff. But uh, if it's like light stuff, you can make it all the way well, down very good. But for example, Kevin Kevin and Laura and Tom and Tom and Faye but all the, have to rely on cell. But there's some areas they have strug struggled. There's areas they've struggled, but you can, if you need to be in an area like Monday through Friday, you can pick that area mm -hmm. and travel the two days mm -hmm. in between. You can be more strategic strategic about like the larger cities yeah that is what it's going to have your good cell phone signal yeah. and just stay there for the week and travel through areas that doesn't have it on the weekend mm -hmm. till the next place yeah yeah because the bigger cities the cell service has actually been been rocking and again it's going to depend on what you have i would i would not come down here with just verizon kevin has been finding out that verizon isn't as great but AT&T, or actually, I don't think he has a plan down here. Maybe that's what it is. And uh -huh. Kevin's not here to ask. So I shouldn't really say that. I will say that AT&T and T-Mobile as a combination has been amazing. Has really, really worked well. Rowdy one. Or Alan, what's happening, buddy? Are a few campgrounds close in Cabo? Yes. Uh, yes. And one of the ones that we're about to move into tomorrow is closed. But we talked to the owner today and we're going down there and uh, we're looking at that campground. And that's all I will say about that. It's like sometimes just putting yourself out there, right? And just go and talk to people yeah. and they will be nice enough to say, yeah, sure. Come over yeah. and, and it is what it is, yeah. right? It's there not going to be the pretty campground. We know that. No. But we're in the heart of everything. That is what we care about. Yeah. It, there are no campgrounds here in Cabo. The no. closest you can get is Las Barillas. Not on Los Cabos. It's like the closest you can get is Los Barriles in one side of the peninsula and the other side of the peninsula will be Todos Santos. Todos Santos. So, so about an closest. hour in each direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hour, hour and a half in each direction. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you'll see that in a video in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Seeking Serenity. I see you're using your newish chip clip bag thingy. How are you enjoying it? Oh, they're awesome. So if you guys didn't get one of these, oh, the, the lighting sucks in here right now. That's I right. know. We should turn on the lights on the we back. Maybe the us. lights in the back will help. So here's this new chip clip thingy that they're talking about. You fold the bag over and then see it's got this little nozzle thing on there, a little nipple thing. I don't know what you want to call it. And look at that. It just slides over. Bam, that bag is sealed. How crazy is that? If I can operate it, it's good. <laughs> what? what are you trying to say? <laughs> Available for $19.95 on TME.com. No. Um, and if you call in the next five minutes, yeah. <laughs> we doubled your offer. Oh, um, oh, how about that? Did that work better? Yeah. I mean, the light is on. Yeah, but did that work better here? No, it didn't work any better. Oh. Yeah, we might have to turn on some lights even behind us. Like right here. Well, I don't know if that'll, I don't know. That'll make like there's the ones on the right. There How you go. That? that work better? Oh, yeah. At least, yeah, I think so. All right. Cool. Oh, now yeah. we have some light. Now you can see the whole room and everything. Now you can see everything. Holy smokes. Let's keep this. Pamela Royers, Pam. Seems like people are afraid to go to Alaska as they are in Mexico. Thankful <laughs> for you two to show the world a safe place if you have a half a brain. Not saying you only have a half brain. Well, 
I think you're you fucking about of, you. Uh, probably talking about me. I, I, I understand. <laughs> I totally get that. Oh, no. Mm. It's like, no, but it's true. It's like, I think that's one of the things we went on the road. And every time we're about to go somewhere, people tell us, oh, don't go there. Memphis, yeah, don't go there. Memphis. It's like just so dangerous. It's like, oh, Mexico, don't go there. Mm. Alaska, oh, yeah, don't go there. So it's like there's so many places we have been through that people tell us don't go there because they're afraid. And we go there. It's like a no big deal. Yeah. If you make mm. all of your travel plans based on the news or other people's fears, or other people's fears you'll never go anywhere. And you have a good point. Like at some point it's like, oh yeah, uh, my cousin's friends, something told me that this is this. It's like, well, that's not the statistic or not something based on fact. It's just somebody's opinion. Right. You know, right. I, and I mean, again, you can look up some of the statistics. They're true here. But mm -hmm. overall, if you base your life on what you see in the news, you will be stuck in your home, never moving for the fear that something might happen. Like, yeah, exactly. Anyway, so, you will never go anywhere. Yeah, let's move this in a little bit, maybe, so people can see your see your smiling face better. Always get the RV strong. Is it fit with friendly? Go. I would say it's like coming down. It was so narrow. The road was so narrow that we were like, "Oh my god!" That's why we have not seen fifth wheels, right? It's right. like we haven't seen fifth wheels. We were like class A's, class B, some trailers, small trailers. And as soon as we came like to the very south end, we start seeing a lot of fifth yeah. wheels. So can you make it in a fifth wheel? Absolutely. Is it tricky? Absolutely. Yeah, like if you have a, if you have, a, well, it's always a tricky in a huge fifth wheel to go. Or even class anywhere. A, a big class or A will big be class tricky. A. But when we were just in Las Barillas, we had a caravan come in and there were some 40 footers in there. Like for like some tours and like expeditions, 40, 45 footers. I mean, there were some big. Right. Now, I wouldn't like to be that person because in my opinion, then our roads is like, oh my God, yeah my heart will be pounding the right. entire time but there were fifth wheels there as well we saw fifth wheels coming and yep. going in a couple of the campgrounds we were in the campgrounds tend to be smaller so yeah. you're gonna have to watch that like there's not these huge pull through will, campgrounds everywhere i will say yes you can make it with your fifth wheel yes you can make it with your 40 footer but you have to be more of an experienced driver yeah because parking in some place is going to be tight some roads are going to be tight right. i mean that's the deal yeah. but but it's doable. It's totally it's doable. It's totally doable. Absolutely. Uh, moving the mark. So George. Hey, George and Melissa. Melissa wants to know, is it mostly no hookups camping? Actually, no. for the most part, has been hookups. Yeah. It, it's been, again, quote unquote, full hookups. We haven't been plugging in because of the yes. electrical. But uh, yeah, for the most part and or they've had a dump station. Mm -hmm. But uh, the first place we stayed at in San Felipe, uh, full hookups. The place in Guerrero Negro was full hookups. Uh, some weird spots that, there, but you could get full hookup. Uh, and we wound up being able to dump before we left. The, the the one in Las Barillas that we just stayed at was they had both. They had really inexpensive water electric for twenty five bucks a night. That's a hundred yards from the beach, right 10. on the beach. Well, we have dry camping for ten dollars a night, like literally right at the beach too. Yeah, but I was talking about in Las Barillas, oh, at, at, La Pla yeah. at Playa Norte. Yeah, and then right on the beach was seventy bucks a night or eighty bucks a night, something like that, and that's full hookup. So well, everything's been full hookup. We were in a site that is a double site. Yeah, you could stay so with a friend. It's a seventy, eighty dollars, but literally so wide you can stay with a friend, so you can share that price. So just FYI, don't yeah. get scared for the seventy, eighty dollars a night. <laughs> yeah, but. Literally, the front of your coach is on the beach. Like, yes. And right now, it's where Kevin and Laura are, Tom and Faye, and Cheryl and Richard. They're literally at that campground. And it's just so nice. The town is so nice. People are so friendly. I mean, everybody's so chill. Mm -hmm. I feel like, even though it's not an island, everybody's in island time for right. some reason. Right. Lance. Lance is actually Lance and Evelyn. He's hey, like, Lance, hey, Evelyn. guys. Um, Jeremy Lane, last time I went to Mexico, no Mountain Dew. I freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen whether they have Mountain Dew or not, but they have uh, Dr. They, Pepper. They don't. They have Dr. Pepper. They have like... No Mountain Dew here. No. Maybe we should open up a Mountain Dew uh, factory. I don't know about that. I don't no. like Mountain Dew, so it's like too sweet. There is a different Jesus. palette down here, folks. Yeah. Like you'll even notice with their Coke, the Coke uh, products are less sugar or t at least have that taste of less sugar things tend to be uh more um what's the word i'm looking for I don't know. uh more tart than sweet i think 
we put I told Paul we put chili and lime and salsa on and everything, everything. On and ice we cream. and we make everything a taco here. So yeah. it's like yeah. So that's our palate. It's very savory and very yeah. We like Less our sugar. like chili lime taste. For even everything. these peanuts have chili lime on them. Yeah, everything less sweet here. Even desserts. You go to a restaurant. Even desserts are a lot less sweet yeah. here. That was a cultural shock for me going into the U.S. I will ask for a dessert, and it's like after two bites, I will be like, I'm done. Just too much sugar. So it was kind of like the opposite. <laughs> no Mountain Dew. It's like G. Hendrickson. The only promise I have had in Baja is that, that the traffic police holds tourists to a higher standard than all others. Do not speed or roll stop signs. That Do not That's speed or roll just, stop signs. That is not true. No. It's like we see like literally everybody doing that. Yeah. We, it's we, pretty uh, bad. We pa I passed a state police car on the freeway the other day because the guy in front of me did it. So I'm like, all right, here we go. And we're both doing 10 kilometers an hour over the speed limit. I'm like, let's see. And I passed him as well. And he just nodded at me when I went by him. <laughs> Literally, we're at a 90 kilometer an hour speed limit. I was doing 100. And the weirdest feeling ever, he just nodded. That's it. Yeah, and everybody here just rolls through the stop signs. It's kind of weird. You got to be careful because if you don't, you're going to get rear-ended. But I, I tend to, but He's, I'm really... He stops, but he... I'm very cognizant of the people careful. behind me of whether or not they're going to run into me. Yeah. But yeah, that's just... that's. I I don't believe that to be true. I, I believe that to be something that, that people might think, but I, I don't know if that's quite true. Um, Richard, Lorena, what part of Mexico are you from? I am actually from Mexico City. A little so, tiny place in the middle of the country. Yeah, nobody has heard about 25 million people. Chris and Brenda Mills, Lover's Beach and Divorce Beach are great. We didn't get to go. We saw them, but <laughs> saw yeah, them the, the boat we were on, it was a little too rough surf the other day, so they couldn't put us on the beach, so... Yeah. yeah, but it's the only beach where you can be in the Sea of Cortez, like see the Sea of Cortez on one side and see the Pacific Ocean on the other side. It's literally like a tiny little beach. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, does it really, does it get really hot down there in the summer and muggy? Yes. I don't know about muggy, but hot, yes. <clears throat> I, I would bet it's muggy inland. Usually it's not muggy. Like even in Florida, if you're right on the beach, it's usually not muggy if there's a little bit of a breeze coming off. But uh, we've been told that it's oppressive heat down here, but only mm. after a storm. They said that the heat is really, really hot, dry heat. But if it's a storm rolls through, that'll be muggy for a few days and then it changes again. But here's what we told Lori's mom and her sister. They live in Auras. It's extremely brutal hot summers because it's El Paso, same kind of climate as Las Vegas. So they have that there, but in the winter it's cold and they don't have the ocean. We're like, why do you guys not come down here? Yes, you're going to have a hot, oppressive summer, but the winters are going to be spectacular. So why not move down here? So we're trying to convince them to do that so that we can visit them. Mm -hmm. Randy Scott, when will we see Paul and Kevin windsurfing? Uh, probably the next video that I'm hoping to have out Tuesday. I think I can get back on schedule. This week was oh tough with the family in town to put a video out on Tuesday. It's just like, but it's hilarious to see them. Like, it's not windsurfing what they're taking. It's actually uh, kite, kite kiteboarding. 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 Kiteboarding is like you're on this giant kite and you're attached to a board that looks like a, a snowboard. And for us, it was more like kite drowning. It was like just getting pulled through like the salt literally water by I a kite while inhaling as much of the ocean water as you possibly could. Like literally, like one of the classes, one of the days is them getting dragged in the water by the kite. Like that's actually one of yeah, the classes. Yeah, it's called body dragging. Oh my God, it's hilarious to see that. It's not hilarious. It is. By it's the time he was done with his classes, like his eyes were so swollen and red. He, he looked like he was doing drugs. Because you have, when you're forcing salt water <laughs> under your eyelids <laughs> and breathing it in. Which, like, that's what fish do. Oh, my God. It was like, by the end funny. of the day. No, it's not funny. I was like. It was funny. I I have never come that close to puking and I don't know how long. Like, constantly on the verge of puking because of the salt water in your lungs. It was horrific, oh, but I had a great time. It was funny. And I never did get up on the board. I got close. I got the board on my feet, which I know sounds weird, 
but they told us that getting the board on your feet and Kevin, if he was here, he would, uh, he would verify this. Just getting the board on your feet is so hard because you're getting drugged through the salt water while inhaling it and trying to puke, putting a snowboard onto your feet while being towed by a kite. It was, it was brutal. What's funny. Is I like, can't wait to do it again. I was, I was like watching him and I was taking video of him because I was able to spot him and all of a sudden he's getting dragged. Like it was his class about getting dragged on the water and everything. All of a sudden he comes out of the water and then he goes in. And I was like, oh my God, how cool you made it. You actually got out of the water. And then he's like, oh yeah, that didn't supposed to happen. Yeah. <laughs> that was an actual my mistake. instructors on the beach goes, yeah, no, that wasn't a good thing. <laughs> I like popped out of the water, boosh, slammed back on the water again. She goes, oh, that was awesome. He's like, mm, no. <laughs> Anyway. But anyways, you will see that probably in the next video or two. And because most of it was shot with GoPro, you don't get a chance to see a lot of it really up close. I'm going to try and zoom in as much as possible. It's going to be blurry. So it might be a little bit grainy. Because also with the GoPro. So the GoPro yeah. is like high quality video. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah it's going to be I wish I could have put the GoPro on my helmet. But both Kevin and I lost our sunglasses, which were our good sunglasses. Because when you smash your face into the water and the the kite string hits you between the face like this it kind of like makes your glasses fly off it was it was awesome and that's why you bought new glasses and that's beach. why i bought new glasses here in cabo san lucas but i am telling you right now it is so fun and i am so hooked on it even though i haven't got up on a board yet i'm watching kite boarding videos 24 7 when i'm not editing and I'm not hanging out with their family i'm waiting for them i'm watching kite boarding videos because it's just awesome Okay, Chris and Brendan Mills, have you gone diving yet? It's like, no, but I don't know if it's actually going to happen unless we do this cover because we are not certified. Yeah, we did discover scuba here before, which is like your Two first dive with, a, with an instructor, and it was absolutely amazing. Was and it's amazing. something that we've been meaning to do because we do want to get certified because it is a crazy world under the water like crazy world. Mm. And it's also one of our fears. Both of us are kind of terrified Afraid. of the water. For and me, I'm afraid of sharks or undercurrents pulling me, but it's like one of those fears is like I need to get over and just do it. And when I'm on top of the water, I'm fearful of what's below me. Uh, when I'm on a kite, I'm not going to be because I can go fast enough that they can't. Well, it's kind of like going to be trolling. It'll be like if there are sharks in the area and you're on a kite board, it's kind of like pulling a lure. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. why is it fly fishing? What's it? All right, I might I have just... to give up kite boarding. <laughs> that might no, not be a good not. idea. No, I'm not going to do that. It's like, Brian, which way will you be going north, five or one? Or that's that's a simple <laughs> question, one. Yeah, we're taking Highway 1 straight up, buddy. It's there like no you going guys, back to Highway 5. Was, unless the Mexican government writes us a certified letter saying that they've completed five, that's never happening again. Here's the thing. It's like, I think that that's what the one thing I will say. You don't have to come down five. I right. know, like, for a lot of people, it's scary. And we could have avoided it. We could have gone again. From San Felipe, gone all the way around to get into Ensenada and down, but that was like a lot of miles yeah. going around We'd a lot of time. Unknowingly. So at a point we were like, him and Tom and Kevin, like the three brave ones, were like, we're toughening it out. We're going through there and all that stuff. So they toughened it out, right. but we didn't have to go that right. way. So it's not like it, that was like a, an optional thing. Right. It was not like a, that's the way to come <clears> down here. We had this. We had people react the same way as they did with Alaska. They saw the Dempster Highway video. I'm never going to Alaska. Oh my God. I wouldn't put my coach through that. Don't, don't go there. You can drive to Alaska on paved roads with, with the exception of a few construction areas, but just drive there. Same thing with five. I'm never going to Baja. We had people saying, I would never do that with my coach. I'm not telling you that you should. I'm saying you should avoid five at all mm -hmm. costs. Come down one, but I think you should come to Mexico. And that's the other thing. None of these videos. No, you am shouldn't I, come to Mexico. Oh, that's right. They shouldn't come to Mexico because there'll be no room for us. Yes. We're not trying to convince any of you guys to come to Mexico. If you don't want to come here, we're not trying to. A man convinced against his will is of the pay, same opinion still is how the saying goes. Yeah. So we're not trying to convince you. We're just trying to let people know that there's a little bit of misinformation and some stuff going on that that really uh, doesn't do you, a, that does you a disservice when you sit at home and yeah. get fearful of going somewhere because of stuff you see on the news or you heard from your cousin's friend's son's nephew's uh, orthodontist. Now, 
Yes. Because you need to brace. With that being said, you need was. to you need to make sure you know your rights. You need to make sure, like when we were through one of the military points, the guy that was there, he was actually the boss, and he came into the coach, and we were outside the coach, and he's like, "No, somebody has to come with me so they can watch me opening the cabinet." So he was very upfront about it. So we're watching them, and I was talking to him, and he said, "You every checkpoint has like a little sign with a phone number, and if it, anything anything ever happens, you can always call that phone yep. number and so." Somebody will help you, and he's and he told me they're it, pretty good about it. And that sign is in English and in Spanish. It says yeah. if you if you felt disservice or you were in any way um, harassed, call this number exactly. right there on the sign, right exactly. right there in English. So again, all of that stuff is people freak out. Like it's not something you're used to. I get it. You're out of your comfort zone, but man, in my opinion, you're missing stuff. And other people were like, what? why would you ever go out of the United States? There's so much to see here. I, I totally agree. There's a lot to see in the United States, but I never claimed that we wanted to just see the United States. I want to see the world. And there's some mm -hmm. really cool stuff. The United States is an amazing country. I love it to death. But yes. there's some really cool stuff outside of it, too, that I want to experience. And a lot of it's me getting out of my comfort zone. Yeah. I mean, we all like we both like to travel to other places, see other cultures, eat different foods and see what's about and all that stuff. We're not afraid of getting out, but then it's also nice to go back home where we call home yeah. that is the US. So yeah, that's I'll also be... nice. And it's like, but we want to explore it. And you know what? This allows us also to show you what's out here. If you like it, if you don't like it, where can you go? What kind of cell phone signal is this? I mean, all that kind of stuff. I think still, like these areas so untapped is just crazy. Yeah, I'll be much more relaxed when I'm back home. There's no yeah. doubt about it. But by that's, the, by that the way, make it a bad thing. Uh, Dutch Hunt Security Force, he donated $25. Oh, man. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. For Who's that? Dutch Hunt Security Force. Dutch Hunt, thank you so much. We appreciate you thank guys. Thank you so much for contributing to my wine money. Well, mm -hmm. now it's fuel money. Now we're like, we don't have a business Yeah, you're going to have to lay so off the wine and start money. contributing to fuel. <laughs> So thank you so much, guys. We do appreciate that. Always Gallardo RV Strong. After this trip, will you buy a new rig? No. No. Freya has been strong, and she has been amazing. Yeah, we'll and just fix her. Yeah, it's like if there's anything, if there else is wrong. anything wrong. I mean, the only thing that has happened on all the way down here on the rig, what it has been? The door. Oh, yeah, the door. That was it, right? That was it, yeah. And you fix it within 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's like we no. made more of a big deal of it than I and I knew it after I shot that and I edited it, I always go, you know, I'm gonna show people that and they're gonna freak out. Oh, I would never do that to my coach. If you had a brand new coach that was really well put together, that wouldn't have happened. Like that didn't happen to Kevin, and you know, and he drives that really expensive Winnebago. <laughs> And then an upgraded. It's an Excel. I think it's an Excel. It's got to be an Excel or an XLS <laughs> or something. And then Tom and Faye have the the Monterey Beaver. That's a very nice coach. All super well made wood and stuff. No problems with theirs. It was just our you know our low end old girl that fell apart. And it was just yes. a door. Just just a door. And that's yeah. it. Patrick's on the move. Patrick's moving on. How long do you plan to stay in Mexico? Then where will you go? How long? We don't know. Where will you go yeah, next? We, we don't know. We were going to be back by April 1st. I don't know. We were going to be happen. back by first mid March, then late March, now like early April. Right. <laughs> it's like plans change as we are here enjoying right. our as, winter in as, the sun. As Tom and Faye will tell you as they're traveling with us, and of course, Kevin and Laura would tell you as well that it's annoying traveling with us because we don't know our plan and we don't, our plans change constantly. So, yeah, I'm sure they would go. I would say I agree. that's the one thing why I think like Kevin, Laura and us, we can like fit traveling together is because they're very like Super flexible, flexible. Oh, my God. Like, so, so let's flexible. live today. Yeah, sure. Let's live today. Let's all move on. Or it's like, yeah, it's like Kevin is like, I cannot work here. There's no cell phone signal. Let's go on to the next town. Let's yeah. move on. So we're not like stuck into like all the plans we have made. Like our plans are flexible, but people that are so used to like having a plan or knowing where to go and stuff, they get annoyed by us. Right. They're like, how come you don't know where you're right. going to be tomorrow? Somebody had messaged me somewhere. And I don't know if it was on Facebook or something asking about reservations down here and if they needed to have reservations to make the trip. We haven't had zero. We've had zero. No. And I think most of these places don't take reservations. Most of these places are pretty good at first come, first serve. And the only one that we didn't we didn't have a good oh, luck Loretto. it was Laredo. Yeah, Laredo. We got there. 
all the campgrounds there, there's three of them, they were all full. Right. So we went that boondocking that night. Yeah. So what? Yeah. Luckily, we found boondocking. Yeah. And it's like, happy vibes. Did you need to get a separate health insurance plan in addition to vehicle insurance? I have not checked our health insurance traveling out of the country. I have to say. We haven't had health insurance. No, we have health insurance. We do now. now. This is the first year, actually, in a long time we have health insurance. And But coming here into Mexico, uh, private health care is a lot cheaper than the U.S. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't have health insurance here, it's like if you something happened to happen, yeah. hopefully it doesn't. But if something happened to happen, you go into a private hospital or a private anything, they will take care of you. And it's going to be like a lot cheaper than the U.S., yeah. like a lot cheaper. And just to... Can I like, uh, let you know how cheap it is? When I have my gallbladder removed in Mexico, it was going to be about probably 6,000 pesos. No, $6,000, like actual dollars, $6,000 to remove it. In the US, the bill I got, it was about $60,000. So that tells you, it's like you need to pay for health insurance to come here. Just come here. If something happens to you, just pay your bill. That's it. Yeah, that was an owie, by the way. Oh, yeah, that was an ouchie. That was, that was like ouch. two years ago. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I haven't had health insurance for 15 years. I just got it this year for the first time. Yeah. Lori's afraid that I'm going to fall off and hurt myself or I might go kiteboarding. Well, before he was going to go kiteboarding, he's like, honey, oh, because one of the days it was bad weather and he still went out and I was like, honey, I need you to sign some papers before you go. <laughs> like, because... <laughs> yeah. Always Gallardo RV Strom. Are you eating out more than cooking in the RV? No, I would say mm. actually more cooking in the RV because it's very hard to eat vegetarian or even vegan. Like for Kevin and Laura here in, in Mexico, once we came down into the bigger cities, La Paz and Cabo San Lucas, San Jose del it's Cabo, easier down here, it's yeah. easier. But on the way down, it was a lot eating in the home. But that been in our budget because now we're in a budget is like it has been amazing yeah. it has been and you know what it's like i can control also my calorie intake you girls know what i'm talking about it's like uh it's when cooking in the rv when you go out they put the chips in front of you and they put like the bread in front of you and you just can't help it right. sometimes right so but with that being said once we got down into the cabo area las barillas and all that yeah we and and we met up with the hamptons we've been we ate out like almost every night I know those Hamptons are a bad influence on us. <laughs> <laughs> like even my family being here on like family vacation is like, oh my God, it's like after they leave, I need to go on a diet again. It's like, uh, oh my God. Um, Pamela Rogers, I love Cabo. We have cruised there numerous times and did a land vacation there too. Sounds like in 20 2023, we'll be driving there. Oh my God, that's some planning when they know in 20 2023, they'll be here. <laughs> like who's that pam pam yeah now there's a planner see there you go <laughs> ah calico junction century paul how much weight have you gained dang wow <laughs> do i look like i've gained weight holy smokes i didn't gain any weight ah. i'm actually the exact same weight i've been for the last i don't know how long i don't know I'm last year or two 180 three pounds i go between 183 and 186. yeah i'm not gonna make a comment about that <laughs> this way, i'm gonna stay away from it somebody else donated 25 bucks i know but i don't know who this Just i have touch not done there touch it rick s rick thank you sir oh, really appreciate that rick do you have a specific question and stephen wheeler and stephen wheeler too holy smokes okay i think okay I'm wait behind. a second I'm, i think i'm behind on the questions because i'm way behind so again because I'm trying to scroll because some of them, they're not in caps. Right. So please put them in caps if you have a question because I'm start going, rolling through it pretty quick. And if it's not in caps, I'm not going to read it because I'm saying way behind everybody. Yeah. So. And then, and definitely Rick and Steve, if you guys have a specific questions, please, please, please ask. And again, thank you so much for your contribution. We really appreciate that. That'll go to fixing the next door that I break. You guys look like you retire or something. So relaxed looking. It's like we're relaxed. Well, we these few days we have like had some sun mm -hmm. and family time. Yeah. So right now yeah. it was like literally even for us like a vacation week. The vacation weeks, if you go out with a family, you know they're not vacations. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're on the go. Here, the maybe time. I'll look more retired if I do this. <laughs> there. I look oh more retired. My goodness. No, you don't look retired. You look like something else. Well, I look red. <laughs> <laughs> You're on one of these. Uh. 
Um, hello, guys. Is a cable the same as key, as in Key West, Lou? It's like, no. Actually, cables mean cape. Is like, a, so there are different capes here. Mm -hmm. So it's not a key, it's not that key is what an island, I think, something like that, or series of something like that. It's no, so it's no, not but the is, same. That, is that what he's asking, or is he asking Hello if it's guys, similar? Is a cabo the same as key? Oh, okay. as in Key West, right? Right, right. No, a, a cape is literally a, a peninsula, like uh, like Cape Cod, it's a it's yeah. an outcropping into the into an ocean, and here it's called uh, it's actually called Del Cabos, right. Or Los, Los Cabos. Cabos, which means the capes, and because there's several outs, there's San Jose del Cabo, Cabo and then San there's Lucas, Cabo San Lucas, Cabo Pumo, and then Cabo Pumo, and yeah, and other Cabos I can't remember. There's a few other Cabos, but yeah, the whole area, like everybody knows Cabo San Lucas. I'll tell you what, San Jose del Cabo, oh, what so a pretty. cute little town. We're gonna so have video pretty. from there. It's amazing. Even my mom is like, I'm gonna move to San Jose del Cabo. Like yeah. she loved it. Yeah, it, it it's awesome. Bill Galatioto donated 20 bucks. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys. I never know what to say. You guys, that stuff freaks me out. Like it really freaks me out. So thank you so much. Okay. Like, just amazing. That can rocks. How much ga does gasoline cost there? I hear fuel is expensive in Baja. It is. Uh, gasoline is about 20.1 pesos, approximately, let's say 20 pesos per liter. And 20 pesos is approximately 90 cents. So just under um, just under four bucks about a gallon. A dollar. About a dollar a liter. So whatever that, so, that gallon. Right, yeah. So between three eighty and four dollars a gallon. So it's just a little bit more than Alaska, but a lot less than northern Canada. So northern Canada, we paid six ten a gallon up there. Yeah, Canada was an ouchie when we went there. So four four dollars a gallon. So yes, a little bit more pricey, but uh, equivalent to coastal U.S., equivalent to coastal California, or it probably Miami area and things like that, or New York. So uh, pricier than the middle of the country, but uh, probably on par with with the rest of the coastal U.S. Um, Calico Junction Century said, "We'll meet you at the RTR, RTR next January." Got my RV yesterday now, and I got to name it. Well, congratulations for your new RV, yes. but it's like we don't go to RTR actually. Right. It's like so. I don't know if you want to. Somebody's explain. singing up a storm down here in the houses. I don't know what's going on. It sounds like a soccer team singing. Um, so again, RTR guys, there's two different things in Quartzite. The Quartzite RV show is the main attraction. That's the the big tent. It's where all of the RV uh, stuff is. They have RV parts and knickknacks and accessories, uh, stuff like that. RTR is the thing that Bob Wells from Cheap RV Living does. It's a separate deal that happens around the same time as Quartzite. So that those things are different. We don't go to the RTR portion of it. The Cheap RV Living thing, it's it's just not our, our deal. Now they do teach well, some other it's like stuff. We, it's hard for us to go there when we don't promote that really. Yeah. So we don't live that way. Right. We. You know they do a lot about how to live on the cheap like how to how to boondock and stuff and how to you know they do a lot of solar talks and good things like that which is amazing but they do a lot of the the van life and and how to just how to live on the cheap that that's just not and of course as i'm saying this you're like you're looking behind me this isn't our stuff by the way this is again thanks richard and cheryl hampton for do donating their place but Definitely hard for us to talk about living on the cheap. We just, we don't really. Uh, we boondock a lot as much as possible. I wouldn't say that we're like out just blowing money, but we definitely don't do the, we're not trying to, to nickel and dime our way around. Well, now we're in a budget though, but. We are on a budget now, but yes. these guys are helping us out. Yes, uh, Rick yes. and the Thank gang. You so Thanks. Much. Those Thank you so much. Those guys are helping out, so that's awesome. 25 bucks feeds a family of six down here. For dinner that's crazy. oh my god food here in mexico is just so like yeah. the prices are so much cheaper so yeah your your fuel prices are higher but, but your, your food, food, goes so food lower. budget is so much lower yeah, it's one crazy. compensates the other right? one right greg allen just tune in why are you in a motel i just thought that was funny yeah yeah we're, <laughs> we're not in a motel obviously you just heard us this is a timeshare unit that was uh given to us by our friends richard and cheryl while we're here in cabo san lucas our rv is parked right out in the parking lot uh, we're back in it tomorrow. So we were here for a week with Lori's family for their family vacation. And uh, yeah, we tried to do a family vacation. Like we 
kind of like a goal for Christmas. Yeah, we like didn't do Christmas every this other year. year, and we were trying to do a vacation, family vacation every other year. So we see each other once a year for sure, yeah. either Christmas or family vacation. So this year was family vacation. Right. Uh, old man in a van. I'm going to travel in an Astro van into Mexico. Are there parks accepting conversion in in RV parks? Oh, absolutely. You will have no problem in that at all. No problem whatsoever. That that is a phenomenal way to travel down here. Yeah, literally, you can fit anywhere. In, <clears throat> yeah, you can for fit sure. anywhere. There's so many boondocking opportunities down here. If you have a van, uh, there's places where you can park right, literally right on the beach. Um, if if you're in a van class B or like a truck camper, this is this you will absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Uh, John Chucker, that's uh, John from Waterbury. Yeah, is John here. from Waterbury, Connecticut. In the uh, house. Yeah, people saying that this is how far behind I am. It's like that they love nosy neighbors. <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to scroll can ahead. And if somebody, if we if we miss your question, post it again. That's but funny. Scroll up can vegetarian eat animal crackers? We have some funny guy, funny <laughs> bastards in our group. Uh, yes, we can eat animal crackers, but we will feel bad about it later. <laughs> That's funny. Polly's always eating chips and salsa. LOL. Yes. Always. He's always. I could sit here all day and night and eat chips and salsa with guacamole. Always. And don't you guys think that Lorena should do a guacamole video? Oh, my God. You keep saying that. It's, it's like... so good. Now, guacamole is just avocado with pico de gallo in it, really. But when she does it, it's amazing. So <clears throat> I'm still trying to get her to do a video on that. It's not really RV related, but it's food related, and that's always good. Brent and Liz Scott, we were hoping you <clears> will record <throat> your Dolly backup skills gain out of that subdivision last video. I know. That was, that was, uh, yeah. He was angry. Paul, Pablo yeah, was I, angry. I didn't back up oh, the Dolly out of that. Paul, here in Mexico is Pablo. So we're calling him Pablito right now. Pablo. Pablito is little Paul. Okay, um, Pablito. <clears throat> so, anyways. Uh, I was furious and everybody in the group knew that and they didn't speak to me for the next few miles because I was just toasted. Uh, I had looked on Google Maps the day before and it showed that the street was pretty wide. What I did not uh, calculate is the fact that there was going to be a ton of construction and people would be parked in the side of the street and parked like a bunch of morons and you couldn't drive through there. So. Yeah, I was hot. I actually disconnected the uh, the dolly for that one. I had committed myself so so far in. Luckily, Kevin and those guys were back far enough, but I committed myself so far. We just unhooked the dolly, and I didn't bother trying to do any skills at that time. I was so mad that it was so 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 narrow. Yeah, that even when Paul has mad skills, yeah. it was just like more like a let's turn around pretty quick because even yeah. there was traffic waiting there for was us. There was traffic and. and People there were kind of like, and I will say that was the foreigners. They were looking at us like just shaking their yeah. head, like oh they were, my god. They were kind of annoyed by us, yeah. but I was annoyed that they were parked like idiots and they built a brand new community with streets that were this wide. Anyway. Anyways. Uh, Brian Jackman, question to you, Lorena. When I was going to school, I hated Spanish. Was English easy for you to learn? Absolutely not. <laughs> this is a great Actually, story. That's your story about English. Actually, I fail English. <laughs> it was like when I was in fourth grade, I was in a most of you don't know, I uh, grew up in a uh, bilingual school that is German and Spanish. So we will have half of the classes in German and half of the classes in Spanish. So I was already with two languages. At fourth grade, they introduced English to us. And when that came around, my brain, I guess it was just too much three languages. So it's like, for me, I had such a hard time. I hated English. And that teacher, you know, we all have that one teacher that help us and we love. And there's that teacher we hate it. Well, my English teacher was the teacher that I hated and she hated me. So it's like she totally failed me. And back then it was one. Uh, well, at least in that school, it's like if you fail one class, you fail the entire year. I mean, all your classes, you have to repeat that like, all that year. So I have. I was able to pass with six, like a grade six, and I have 5.9. So it's like they failed me for just like 0.1, basically. And I hated that teacher, hated her. And I told Paul, it's like, if I could go back to her and talk to her now, it's like she was an English, like from England. It's like teacher. It's like, yeah, she was. You could was... swear at her and tell her off in English. Totally, totally. <laughs> so no, English was not easy for me at the beginning. <laughs> 
I think it was more about immersing the culture kind mm. of thing. And I think it's what's happening to Paul right now right. here in Mexico with Spanish. Is she, He's immersing himself in the culture and now he's trying more Spanish while down here. Right. Because you would think that, you know, being married to someone who speaks the language that I would uh, learn. But we've really, uh, we've said it many times, we've worked so much on Lori, uh, her English and or her accent that we haven't worked on Spanish. And because mm -hmm. we're around mostly English speaking people, her English is just Yeah, I always told Paul out of the beginning, don't try to hurt my feelings. If I'm saying something wrong, let me know so I can fix it. And not just be on the wrong thinking that I'm saying it right. Right. So it's like out of the out of the bat, out of the beginning, I told Paul, don't you're not gonna hurt my feelings, just correct me. And I went to classes too, mm -hmm. like to get rid of some of my accent. So because people sometimes they have a hard time understanding an accent and they will not understand me. Uh, but I think now no. I still have my accent, but I think right. now people can understand me better. You have your moments, but for the most part, you, your English is fan fantastic. Yeah. And and until, yeah. Yeah. Until she's much. had a, and a few drinks and I'm like, tres modelo negros. And then my English gets better. And yeah, <laughs> no, uh, but I think what's frustrating about learning a new language is just, it's just, we're learning something that it's really super unfamiliar with and because we try so hard to understand and we can't, it's frustrating. And it, it's frustrating for me. Like the other day I said something to the guard and I said half in Spanish and half in English because my brain just immediately went back to English. And, and I, I was embarrassed by that. And you know, her family's in the car and I'm trying to, to speak their language. And so I got kind of embarrassed by it, but then they're supportive. So mm -hmm. um, that, that's what you just have to understand is that you're gonna say some embarrassing things and and that's just the way that's it is don't the, don't get frustrated just continue to to work on it part of le learning yeah curve. learning anything yeah so even sometimes once in a while paul or kimmy will kind of like laugh at what i say because of the pronunciation and i just like i don't care it's like yeah it is what yeah it we is. totally make fun of her no it's like kind of mm -hmm. like this is my yam when i say this is my yam yeah so jam instead of jam instead of saying this is my jam laurie says this is my yam it's funny and cute <laughs> Chris and Brenda Mills, next year is my 50th birthday and our 30th anniversary. Congre congratulations. We're planning to head back to Los Barriles to celebrate. Well, next year on Los Barriles, uh, Cheryl and Rich already rented a condo yeah. for three months, I believe. Yeah, Richard like and Cheryl that. will already be down there, so you'll be so able to hang with them. You can party with them. Yeah. That can rocks. Are you going back to Las Vegas when you leave Mexico? No, no, no need to. No plan to. We have no connection there now. Uh, our business is sold. We have no family there. We still have some friends there, but uh, I don't think so. Yes. Uh, how many lithium batteries did you install? None. Yeah, we have we have no lithium. Uh, we still have our four AGMs that we bought last year after leaving Quartzsite. And uh, we have four 250 amp hour AGM batteries, which means <clears throat> we only have 250 amp hours of actual usable and i won't get into that right now but uh it's been more than enough it's been more than enough we've never gotten down below 50 percent in our batteries which mm -hmm. is the the recommended actually the agms i have they recommend never getting more than 80 percent but uh then you you know you kill off your life cycles if you do that we've never got below 50 percent, even even in alaska on the days that it was cloudy no, I nope. mean, it was pretty good. Yep. Uh, Lisa, when you cross the borders, Canada, Mexico, US, do you need papers for Aussie to prove vaccinations? I do have his papers, yep. always like the updated papers at all times, every time we cross the border. Uh, I have only been asked once, like literally from all the times that we have been crossing the border, even just to see my family in the car, not even the RV. I have only been asked once and that, that has been it. Yeah, and that was somewhere on the East Coast last year, right? We've never been. We weren't uh, asked this year all the way through Canada up into Alaska and back. I don't remember. No, it's like, I mean, we really yeah. have not been asked. And we tell them we have a cat. So. Yeah, and somebody asked us about bringing pets to Mexico. Guys, the the rules are different down here. Like, it's really, they don't care about a lot of the minute stuff. They don't care that you have a pet. They really don't. You can bring a dog down here. You can bring your cat down here. They don't care. Now, going back into the U.S., you better have the paperwork to prove that your cat or dog has its license, has its uh, vaccinations, not license necessarily, but has its vaccinations, has its paperwork, and that it is what it is. Uh, but they don't care when you come down here. They really, really don't. Okay. Would you guys go back to Alaska? Oh, yeah. Eventually. Absolutely. Eventually I mean, we, we will. It's just so far to go. But, yeah, absolutely. It was amazing. 
I mean, we loved it. We loved it. I mean, the scenery, I mean, this. If they could crank the scenery. temperature up about 10 degrees, that would be awesome. <laughs> Chris and Brenda, Lorena, and your beer is getting warm. I know, right? Well, it's kind of chilly right now, so it's not getting too warm. <laughs> uh, harm eating, eating, no say. I can't remember how to say it, or I don't know how to say it. After all those terrible roads, do you ever consider a ride, a ride system? Oh, air ride. Air ride system. Harm eiding. Eiding. Um, yeah. air not for not for our coach. Air ride for that thing, it's too much money for the the amount of coach. It would probably cost me ten grand to put air ride in a thirty thirty thousand dollar coach. So, I can't see doing that. Um, I would think that in a, in a coach that has air ride, the roads would be much better. Absolutely. Uh, that camp rocks is like, do you see any campgrounds with 30 or and or 50 amp service? We have not seen those. It's all, that's one thing I will say all 20 amp. So yeah, if you're going to try and blast AC and do that sort of stuff, not going to happen here. Uh, most of it is just enough to run your electronics and just enough to run um maybe a heater if you needed it but we have not plugged in we haven't used either did we we used a little bit of heat up up on the san felipe coast and that's it we haven't used heat, heat or ac i don't remember but maybe yeah because it was chilly it was chilly there. but yeah since we've got down here we've not we've not used used heat or ac so uh there's no need know. for 30 to 50 amp the yeah. only reason you're going to use 30 amp or 50 amp in your coach is to run your acs and we haven't used that yet yeah, no. So if it's something that you absolutely need for something in your coach, uh, they're not going to have it. You're going to have to run your generator if you're going to have to run AC or, or that stuff. Yes. Charles, did you know, uh, re did you know renew U.S. passport at Mexican embassy? No. no. Actually, I renew my Mexican passport. I am a Mexican citizen. So that's right. what, what I renew at the Mexican consulate. Right. She's in the process of yeah. going through the uh, the Mexican the Mexican. Wow. <laughs> now you guys know why uh, our videos have um, bloopers at the end. Uh, she was renewing her Mexican passport, and that's something they do like that. It's crazy. Again, it, it's annoying that the United States takes so long to do that. But, yeah, we did that at the consulate. Some people were confused about that, but we, we did that at the consulate. The, the FMM, the visa that you need to come down here for six months, that was about $40. That you get on the other side, on this side of the border, on the Mexican side of the border. As soon as you cross, there's an office that you go into to get your tourist card. Uh, we chose to do it the day before by walking across and then driving across the next day. You could do it all in one. It's just easier if you you separate that out. Some of the border crossings don't have the ability to for you to park there. And so it might make it uh, difficult for you to do it. So we just chose to do it that way. Go over, have lunch, get your FMM. And then you're good to go in the next day or two. Yeah, somebody said it's like, oh my, oh my God, so many, so much stuff to do. So yeah. many, you need so much more insurance that is costly, and you need so many permits to go. It's like I'd rather just stay in my country. And it's like, if, if, if you want to use that as an excuse, yeah, go ahead. It wasn't. I mean, literally, we got the FMM in thirty minutes. Yeah, and it's one permit, not one a bunch permit, of permits. And then insurance was just a call. Yeah, insurance was, was a call. Yeah, it's six months worth of insurance down here that's about equivalent to your six months back uh, home in in uh, the U.S. But we never did see, we never did ask the U.S. if we could have canceled mm -hmm. for six months. We probably could have and saved that money. And I might make that call tomorrow to see if we can pull that off. And we'll let you know if, if it's possible. But it's really not that hard to come down here. Again, you want to use it as an excuse that there's all this stuff you have to do to get down here. That's fine if that's the way you want to justify it, but you're missing I, what I think is is a pretty spectacular trip. Mm -hmm. Different Spanish accent in Baja compared with the rest of Mexico. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say old coastal Mexico has a very slightly different accent, like it's a coastal accent, but it's like for the most part, it's like yeah, we can understand each other, I guess. Like in Spanish, it's they like, go "Como estás, amigo." Like again, everybody no. is so laid back. Yeah, no, they don't. <laughs> Jesus. New Nomadic, take a second and smash the thumbs up for Lorena and Paolo. I'm assuming Pablo. Pablo por favor. <laughs> Just trying to help for you. <laughs> it's like, thank you so much, New Nomadic. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. We appreciate you, buddy. How you doing? I hope things are well. That's Steve. From uh, 
Donald Santiago, would you consider the Class B plus you show in the nosy neighbor segment? They are they are very nice. Oh yeah, if we were going to yeah. go to a smaller coach, we would definitely consider that one. It's it's awesome. The thing I don't like about that is that corner bed where the person on the inside has to climb over the person on the outside in the middle of the night. Be, you know, if if you get up in the middle of the night, which sometimes I do, hey, nature calls. But that that's a problem. And and then if I try to sleep on the the outside, there's the corner is cut off, so it's shorter. But that's it's a really well done coach. It's really, really well done inside. Mm -hmm. Like, I love it. I always tell Paul again, it's like, I would never live in something that's small, like full time, something that's small. But after seeing this specific one, it's like, I was like, this is very doable. It has so much storage. Obviously, I will have to go a little bit more minimalistic than I am now, but it's totally doable. Right. right. And you will fit anywhere. Right. It's like, uh, I was going to say, uh, we have a small. Fifer, thirty foot. We'll we'll love to do the trip down to Cabo. Just ordered an Anderson hitch, hoping to take the bucking off of the rough roads. Uh, who was that? Uh, Gold us two man twenty seven. Cool. So it's like um. Cool. So fifth wheel, yeah, absolutely. You can do a fifth wheel down here. Uh, the construction areas are going to be a little bit rough, but the and the roads narrow, but totally doable. Yeah, totally doable. Is five now your worst road? Where is oh, absolutely. Where is road one in main rank now? I would say road, I would say one in main ranks between five. I think it's number two. It was brutal. Like, I, I'm gonna have to say it this way when we're in one, like it was that we was shaking so bad. Actually, one of the what is it like? Uh, something broke on the coach that it was just swinging so much. And oh, we, we broke a we broke a suspension, uh, a sway bar. We yeah, broke a, it, a it sway was bar. That bad. Ozzy came out from his hiding spot and he just started screaming and crying, like saying, "Like what the heck? What is happening?" I mean, it was it was pretty bad. So yeah. that, that was our worst road so far. Yeah, the way it but, just shook your coach was brutal. But five, it, there was no road. It was there. a goat path. <laughs> <laughs> that is the whole thing about it. There was no road. Yeah, there. It, it was literally. I still think we somehow got on the Baja 1000 trail. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know what. Oh, that looked like a donation. Is that one of the guys that were? Yes. Okay. Again, thank you guys when you guys donate. I, I Lorena, this makes me this Nolans, Lorena, have you got your call for your citizen appointment yet? Uh, we know you were concerned about the timing. It's like I have been looking online because I there is a portal where I can go in and log in for my call because we're not really getting mail right now only in Mexico. And they say haven't called. So it's like um Yeah, we can't yeah. get mail down here. I tried to send a piece apart to Richard and Cheryl, and it almost would have been just as fast for me to bring it down here. I think it took two, two and a half or three weeks. No, I think it was 10 days, 10 days to two weeks. 10 days. And that was sending it UPS three day, three day. Like literally it was a uh, super light, small box. And it was what, like $300, $200, yeah. something like that. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, it was bad. Um, okay. I'm trying to find the questions because people are not putting them on caps. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to upset her. If you got a question, put it in caps because it stands out. It makes it easier. We got about 20 minutes left. Holy what, smokes. What is, the best street vendor, what is the best street vendor food you have have in the corn cup thing? Oh, I love my corn cup. It's just so good. Yeah, and she had just another like... one when she had another one when we were just in San Jose, Del Cabo, and uh, at the street fair there, which we'll show you guys in, the, in a couple of, couple of weeks probably. Uh, so good. Where are we going for summer? I don't know. Summer isn't here yet, so we don't know. Somewhere where it's on the 70s, 80s max. 70s or 80s, so Colorado-ish, maybe? I don't know. I, I would like to visit the center of the country a little bit. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of YouTubers haven't done that, and so we've gotten a lot of people saying, hey, you've never nobody comes to Kansas, nobody comes to Iowa, nobody comes to these other places. I, I would like to do that, so we'll we'll see. Yeah, we don't know. We I don't mean, know. Like, we, we literally don't know. Don't know the one once thing, we cross the border the here, one where thing, we're going. 
I know for sure is not gonna go to a very cold place. I think that's the one yeah, no lesson I got to from Alaska is like for me it was hard to go like almost one full year in the cold. Like I like my warm, so that was a little bit too much for me. Uh, Goblin 2004. How many national parks have you been to in the U.S.? I have no idea. I mean, we don't keep track of that. Half a dozen, maybe. I know more dozen. More. Yeah, I don't know. Like I couldn't even name them right now. No. I guess. See, those are the kind with, of things that we need to track our, of and with make RV posts about. Or told like in our lifetime. That's another question. Yeah, with, with RV, RV, certain amount, we and then we've been to, to other others ones. without yeah. the RV. So. I, I don't know, maybe a dozen, but mostly on the West Coast, the West Coast and obviously now Alaska. But um, I guess we've been to some on the East Coast. Um, Acadia. I mean, we have been Acadia. We have been Grand Canyon. We have been uh, to um, Zion. Is Zion National? Zion is a national park, mm -hmm. um, but I not with the coach. We have been to the Everglades. We have been to, right. I mean, right now it's so hard to just like, Get in my head like super right. quick, but anyway. Right. Oh, the redwoods. Mm -hmm. uh, that cam rocks. How much does a typical campground cost per night in the Baja? It's just all over 25 the place. Twenty five bucks, I would say, no, is about average. No. I mean, I would say like in your more touristy areas, I would say twenty five dollars to like uh, up to forty bucks. Like even in Los Barriles, we could have say one row back from the actual ocean front and stay there for twenty bucks. Right. So in the bigger cities are your twenty twenty five dollars. When you're in like the very small towns, you are in the ten dollar to the sixteen ish, eighteen ish dollars. So it's like it's it's pretty cheap. That's I think like one of the reasons we have not boondocked so much down here because it's a uh, for us it's like a safety issue. And I was like, you know what? It's not that expensive in a campground, so let's go to a campground right. and we have amenities. That's another question there. Just catch up on bill there uh will you please just catch us new followers up on the cats and motorhome name in motorhome name so the cats we have a cat one cat his name is ozzy he is the prince of darkness i named him after ozzy osborne mm -hmm. and the the coach is, we call her freya and freya is the goddess of sex and love and she's a norse goddess the wife of uh odin i believe I don't know. I believe so, yeah. And but we're well, Vikings it's the, fans. It's not the wife. So. It's kind of like an, just another god. Yeah, another god. It's like the female god, and then it's like goddess. Yes. Yeah, and then there is the male god, and it's like, and we we <clears> said it's like we were gonna start with Freya when we actually upgrade our We will go Odin, and then once we have our ultimate RV, we will call it Valhalla. That is kind of like their heaven. Yes. Uh, I guess that at that point when we call all this, it was like we were big fans of all the Viking culture. Yeah, yeah we were watching Vikings <laughs> but, on TV. Uh, yeah. But it has worked right yeah. now, and we're so happy with Freya. It's yeah. like she's so been far. Awesome. By the George way, George and Melissa, George, I'm gonna slap you guys. Moving the mark till you get the patron really going and buy some gas. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much, for the donation. George and Melissa. It. You guys are awesome. Why does Paul wear a Harvard shirt? I went to Harvard. No, actually, Lorena went to Harvard. And bought me the shirt. To we the were in Boston shop. and she yeah. went to Harvard and there was it a was, gift shop there. It was more like a local joke, but then yeah. he kept the shirt. I told him, you can yeah. donate it. It's fine. And he's like, no, I keep it. I like it. It <laughs> makes me seem smarter until I open my mouth. And then, and not so yeah. much. <laughs> what? You're not supposed to agree with me. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Pablo, where is the solar video? Like everybody's asking where's the solar and the backing oh up video, Pablo. Come on. Jesus. Guys, I suck at this thing. I suck at the whole video thing. You guys see that, right? Um, it's coming. So it's funny Christmas. because there's Lorena. Seriously, will you please do a quack video? I don't know what a quack video is. Guac. I'm assuming they're oh, calling don't like make fun a of them guac. spelling guacamole. Sorry, it's no things. Oh, that, now they don't make fun of your accent. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Now I see. Now I feel bad. It's see? like guac. See, because English is my yam. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm telling you, uh, Paul, you really need that Dr. Pepper endorsement. I know, right? I know. Prices of gas, we already said. Uh, can you subscribe to Moving the Mark and donate a hundred dollars? That's awesome. Uh, that's funny. We actually have somebody doing that at some point. Like, he's like, "Oh, we're gonna support you on Patreon for a dollar." It's like, "Can you support us? Minimum five dollars." And that was pretty funny too. Uh, what is the meaning of Freya, the god? We just went through that. Yeah, the yeah. goddess of goddess of sex and love. And yes, um, 
how did you guys meet? That's a very long story. There is, but a, there is a video. Yeah, if if you Google that on our channel, there's a, a video that talks about that. But uh, it it was back when when I was a male stripper and Lori tucked her first dollar bill. It was low after that. No, no at all. I think that was Kevin. <laughs> Yeah, that didn't that happen. That was a love story with Kevin, I think. Yes. A different one. Yeah, we actually met in St. Louis. So there is there is a video that explains yeah. that story. It's like 45 minutes long. It's 45 minutes. So and it's kind of boring, point. really. So if you're just totally bored with yourself, just go to our channel and search How Did We Meet. I yeah. Think it's on and there. it's one of our FAQs video. Yeah. Uh, because very like a lot of people really ask that. Richard, which direction are you going this year? I mean, kind of like Midwestish and then going south again. In the for the winter, a lot of people asking the summer. Um, why was the last video part five? <laughs> Probably because I hit the wrong button, it should have been part three. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, more Americans or Canadians in Baja? Canadians, definitely. Yeah, a lot I think of Canadians like, down here. I think Canadians are more fearless, like they don't care yeah. about the news, they just travel here, period. Yeah. And Americans are more like fearful about coming down yeah, here. Yeah, they see the news and th there's brown people and it scares them. But uh, I would say the U.S. people that we have met here, they're like, oh, yeah, we love Baja. It's like we don't care about Oh, the my news. goodness. We met these two guys on the boat yesterday, which we will have video of that soon. Um, they, two guys from Ohio, super nice guys, Spence and Kevin and Trish. If you guys are watching, we met those folks on the boat. They love Cabo San Lucas, man, and they were awesome people. They were really super, super nice people. They were from Ohio, and they were hating the fact that they had to go home to the snow. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, there's a lot of people, man. The, the Americans that are down here, they just love it. This is like the tropics. This is like going to Hawaii, folks, without the – Without the six yeah, hour Hawaii. flight. Hawaii is more tropical. It's more tropical, but there's your parts of this area here your that are beach without the tropical, but I still love it because I'm not at the beach sweating my ass. It's like, I'm right. just kind of like, I'm just, it's just a dry, right. Right. and still a little bit humid, but right. it's like still somewhat dry here. Right. It's like, uh, how much for ferry from mainland? I have no idea because we have not taken it, but it's like somebody asked that camp, it's like, would you consider driving your coach on the mainland side of Mexico? Yes. Well, we have considered, but I think our coach is a little bit large to do that. And I'm talking more about where to stay. More than driving is like where to stay. It's a little bit large. Yeah. So there is another pointer for kind of like, uh, like the smaller coaches versus the larger ones. Um, I'm trying to go. Where are you heading for spring and summer? <clears throat> Cat's name and coach name. Spring and summer. Like... We just, uh, again, don't know yet. We know that we're going to be in California April-ish, and then we're going to go east. Did you drink the cab? Moving the mark. Oh, yeah. I think I did it like when I was in courtside. I'm... No, I did it in the last life. What are you talking, George? I drank your wine in the last life. Did you? Yeah. And actually, Keith and Linda are here. I was going to drink tonight your wine. And then it's like, I was like, I have to go with Mexican beer because we're in Mexico. That was. Yeah. So reason. maybe the next live, if it makes it that yeah. far, we don't know if it'll make it that far. I don't know. Uh, because even like my sister's uh, fiance, new fiance is like, he brought some Hungarian, actually traditional bowl of alcohol. Like I don't know how to describe it. And it's very good. So it's like, yeah, I might not drink yeah. wine for a little oh, bit. Doug's probably already gone, but bye Doug. If, you, if you're still around. Do you drink the water there? Uh, would you consider driving to Yellowknife? Yes, absolutely. We're Northern still Canada. Knife. Northern Canada, Northwest Territories. Oh, Northwest yeah. Territories. It's like, yeah, actually, I look at some pictures of it. It looks pretty cool. Uh, what happens if you have a mechanical issue uh, requiring help? Will that be a major problem? Uh, I, I don't think so. One, I can handle the majority of the issues that we're going to have. Two, it's a gas coach. It's just a Ford truck. And... You can find parts and there's mechanics down here for all that kind of stuff. So I, I don't think it'd be a huge issue. If we're out in the middle of nowhere, it'd be just like being out in the middle of nowhere in the U.S. It's going to suck having to get a tow truck there or whatever. But uh, no, I, I don't think it'd be that big of a deal with a, with a gas coach. Any plans on coming to Eastern Canada in warm weather? Of course. We have been on to Eastern Canada. Yeah. 
I don't know what warm weather is for you guys, but it's like we were there in the summertime. Yeah, we were we were there, Lisa. I don't know where you are over there, but our we did a whole video series in Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island, uh, New Brunswick and stuff. And we're definitely going to go back because we want to get out to uh, Newfoundland. Don't know how many years do you plan the RV lifestyle? We don't know. Yeah, we 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 As originally long- got a year out of Lorena, and now we're two years, three months. So. Who knows? And here's the thing. It's like, as long as we're having fun, might as well do it. We don't have like a family to tie you somewhere. We don't have a house to tie you somewhere. I know some of you guys are like, I cannot go out there because my uh, parents are ill or Leo because I have kids or whatever. Uh, luckily enough, we don't have that problem. Our parents are still strong. So it's like, as long as we're having fun, we're out there. We're just enjoying one day at a time. Mm-hmm. Literally, literally one day at a time. Yeah, absolutely. This is a good question. Question. Uh, through all your travels, you guys were to pick a city to live in. Where would it be? That's that's from Ken Cunningham. Cabo, Cabo <laughs> San Lucas. What's that? There's a I guess there's a Toby Keith song that we listened to on the boat the other day. This would be in this would be in my top five now. Like if I could find a way to live here and make money here, it'd be uh, awesome. I don't know though. Like there's some places even in the US I also love. We love Austin, San, Di- San Diego. San Diego. We love San Diego or DOC. We love Austin. We love uh, San Antonio. Um, I like Destin. Destin is very pretty yeah. and tropical. That's more yeah. of a tropical setting. Yeah. And then, of course, down, uh, you know, Florida. I love Florida. I just wish the bugs weren't the size of Volkswagens. Oh, my God. And they just swarm you to death. So I, I love Florida. If I could just figure a way to have a bug net around me 24 7 that'd be awesome yeah um spanish spanish i was just yeah reading about that it's like hola lori my abuelo era mexicano nacido en merida yo quiero visitar la península de yucatan like yeah the yucatan peninsula is supposed to be beautiful we have right now friends right now there that they were full-time RVing and now they move over there for a year and now it has been over a year and they have been staying there because they said it's just beautiful so awesome um they drove the cabo trail where are you from i don't know if that was for somebody else we we drove the cabot trail as well wow, it was beautiful it was awesome. Okay, I never considered driving down the Baja Peninsula because I am not fluent in Spanish. How important is it? I can say a few common phrases and understand when people speak slowly and I can read signs. I will say, like I said, the Hamptons came here by themselves. Without any Spanish. Like very extremely little Spanish and they were aim- able to make it. So, and also right now, the cool thing about it is technology. Yeah. You have Use translators. Like they were here in the condo with my family. My mom doesn't speak English, like very little English too. And Richard and her, they were like talking to each other through the phone, through a translator. So yeah. they were like laughing. Yeah. They were having so a good much. Old time. They were having a good time. So I, it's, it's easy for you to do, even if you speak zero Spanish, really uh, most people, are going to be able to um uh there most people are going to be able to communicate with mm-hmm. you most a lot of times you can just point like gas you can point at the regular gas and be done we're getting really really close guys yeah. we got about eight minutes more. i know we didn't get to everybody Le- tonight. i can't believe how fast this i time know went time Holy just smokes. went fast why not go in dual citizenship actually us doesn't recognize dual citizenship I have to what? How they call it? Renounce or yeah, you, know, you like, have to denounce. Denounce, denounce uh, my citizenship in Mexico. But when I talk to Mexico, they're like, when I ask them, once I get my citizenship in the U.S., how do I enter Mexico when I come in with an American passport or Mexican passport? And they said they don't recognize it, but we still do. Come in here with your Mexican passport. So it's like I still, as far as yeah. Mexico knows, I'm still like a Mexican citizen every time I come here. When I became a U.S. citizen. I had to denounce my Canadian citizenship and say that I would go to war against Canada, which I think is hilarious. But yeah, the United States no longer recognizes dual citizenship, which again, kind of a weird deal. Like I was born in Canada. You can't take that away from me. But in my heart, I'm I'm an American citizen. I, I have been for a long time. And and yeah, with Lori, same thing. Mexico recognizes her as will always recognize her as a Mexican citizen, just like Canada will always recognize me as a Canadian. But the United States says, once you've made that switch, you are American. 
Mm -hmm. So that's how it works. So I think at this point, like there is some more question. It's just hard to kind of like really um, kind of like address everything. I'm so far behind. I'm not even close to finishing the questions. So I think this point we can like just leave it there and just kind of like close Mexico. Our thoughts and what what our like plans, if any, in Mexico. Yeah. So this this is funny. Well, just the last few. This is it. That's the end of them. So just do the last few quick. Would you ever buy a TT fifth wheel travel trailer after motorhome? It's possible. We don't know. Uh, can you give us a shout out in your next video? That'd that would be, so be so cool. cool. Chris and Brenda Mills. We can give you a shout out right now. <laughs> I, I'll forget. I'll try and remember that, but I'll forget. Don't, um, don't forget New Hampshire and Vermont. You're way out to Newfoundland. Absolutely. It's like, I know. We yeah, we missed have it missed last so time. Much. Which camera Kevin, are you using Kevin, how's the smoke left? down here? You know what's funny? You guys look at Kevin and think he's this crazy hippie smoking dope smoking guy kevin doesn't smoke <laughs> that's awesome uh i was impressed with your earlier work done all on just the phone yes somebody says oh which camera are you using shooting this live i'm shooting the live on uh i can't even show you how i could i don't know how i could show you oh watch this um i'm shooting the live on what's called a c920 it's a logic cam video and watch this. I'm going to I'm going to blow your mind right here and so I can show you what I'm shooting this on. So you guys will be able to see in the camera the camera. So that's what I'm shooting this on. It's a USB camera that hooks into my computer so that I can stream live. That's it. Okay, so <clears throat> that's what we're going to call it. Okay, cool. So, so talk about Mexico. We can do that. Mexico. I will say it's like it has been a nice surprise because even me, we have been in Cabo before, but we flew here. So it's like we didn't get to see the entire Baja Peninsula. So now that we have been drove all the way down here, it has been an amazing surprise how people are so nice. Even Rich and Cheryl, they were pulled over on the side of the road and just having lunch and somebody actually pulled over and with no English, just pretty much sign language. They asked them, it's like, are you OK or you need help? So people are just so friendly here. It's like everything in Mexico is negotiable pricing wise. So yep. it's like everything. So you just make sure, obviously, not if you go to Walmart, something like that, those are fixed prices. But if you're like touring or anything like that, or buying just like a, a souvenir shirt, or whatever, everything of that is negotiable. So that I have to bring back my negotiation skills on mm -hmm. our trip here. So it's like culture here is so different. And I think because it's different, people are always afraid of it. They, it. They're not used to the culture over here, but you need to come in here with an open mind of like, okay, what? how is culture there? And let me understand it and let right. me adapt a little bit to it. It's not just trying to, like, if it's not like back home, it's just not the right way or right. the right thing. Yeah, it's not a first world country. No, it, it's... and it's like, and you have to come up with an open mentality. And once you open your eyes and you open your mind, you see a totally different world and you see the charm of this country that is the people, the food, the fun, the beach, the beach camping. I mean, it's just like, it's just an amazing area. And open your heart. And open your heart to other people too. And through the middle of Baja, it has not been, it has been pretty scenery, desert scenery. Mm -hmm. But we have come across also such an amazing thing, like the bay where we saw the the whales, the Ojo de Liebre, that is like uh, the whales with the baby whales. It's like, that was in my bucket list. And it's just, you see such an amazing places too. So anyway, my point is that don't come to Baja, stay away. Otherwise you're going to take our campgrounds. <laughs> because we want to come back and it's like i think it's like and i think other youtubers have, have come down to mexico they have said the same thing it's just a big surprise and such a nice day just don't expect your luxury stays with like the pools and the hot tubs and all that stuff it's just more a rustic feel down right. here but with a little pretty around right. you and I will say, if you want to know information about traveling into the other part of Mexico, Mark and Trish, our friends Mark and Trish did a video series when they traveled there. They were into more inland Mexico versus yeah. us in the Baja Peninsula. It was just so much easier to come here than down there paperwork-wise. Yeah, it, it does require more paperwork yeah. and more insurance to go down through there. You have to get what's called a, a TIP, a TIP. Uh, it's transport something I have permit. no idea, but also... Uh, it's a transport permit for your vehicle. Uh, that you don't have to get when you come over here, unless you're bringing down um, boats and or ATVs, UTV stuff like that, which is a totally different subject. Anyway, there is more. I mean, <clears throat> there's more. We're stuff not gonna there. get technical right. on it. It's just more stuff to it. But it's right. like it's just such a charming 
place to come, Mexico. And I'm not saying because it's my country. I love my country. I already told you the downside is like there's some stuff there that I don't like. I don't like the whole like garbage thing around. I hate that. Um, they don't have the infrastructure that we do in the United States. Like they I was don't say, have these people they don't have giant street sweepers and things like that. Yeah, they just don't. street sweepers here is like it's, it's a guy with a broom. It's literally not the thing here. So you will see a lot of that stuff. Also, uh, a lot of unfinished structures. People here, they live on a cash basis, not on a dead yeah, basis. Yeah. So if I don't have like money to finish, the look of my house is not important. I have a room to sleep. So you're going to see a lot of that kind of stuff here. But you have to understand the reason behind it. No, it yeah. just looks ugly, period. They spent their last dime trying to get a roof over their head. And that, yes. that was all that was important. They're not worried that it looks perfect. And the other thing that I have forgotten about Mexico now down here is like the difference in uh, classes. And I think a lot of even Mexican actors, they talk about it, about classism here. It's still a huge thing. Or right. you have a lot of money or you have no money. And you can totally see that. And that's one thing that although right. Mexico is trying to get rid of it, you can totally see here. Right. You'll go through areas with multi-million. Well, that's another thing we talk about here. But you will go through areas with multi-million dollar homes and then areas where there is literally nothing. Yeah, there nothing. are cardboard shacks and um, and skids put together to try and make a mm -hmm. house because they don't have anything. Mm -hmm. um, but with that being said, the other thing you see here is you will see a multi-million dollar house parked next to a shack. It is the craziest the park, thing ever. Like built next to a yeah. shack. Yeah. yeah, right on the ocean. You'll see this just beautiful, gorgeous home. And next to it is this lean-to thing with uh, with leaves on the top of the roof. Like yeah. You don't see that in, in the United States. So there is things like that that freak people out. I will tell you that I have fallen in love with this place in the last month that we've been down here. It, it's crazy. Los Barillas was amazing. I'm really enjoying this area here. And, and I'm, I'm glad we A lot it. of foreigners, like a lot of people, you think, oh, it's like uh, people don't travel there any longer. There's no people. It's like, no, it's like all these places, they're full of foreigners, full yeah. of Canadians and Americans and people from Australia, New Europeans. Zealand, Europeans. Mm -hmm. Like you see a lot of the plates coming into like smaller, so mostly the smaller RVs or truck campers and all that, they're Europeans. So it's like a lot of foreigners here. So mm -hmm. don't feel like you're alone. Like you're traveling here by yourself and you're the first one that is gonna cut a trail through here. It's like, no, you hear a lot of people right. that can help you out too. Right. Right. I, I wish we really did have Laura and Kevin and Tom and Faye here. Tom and Faye were, were hesitant, about, hesitant about coming down. I would like to ask them that same question that we were asked, would we travel by ourselves? I'd like to ask them that. And I, and I bet their answer is they will. They would travel by themselves. Now. Yeah, because even like right now, we are not having the same timing to go back into the U.S. And we talk about it. And Tom and Faye were like, yeah, we feel comfortable enough that we have to branch out. We can go on our own back home. And it's like, yeah. OK, it's like amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been really, really cool. So. As always, we really appreciate you guys joining us and spending so much time with us. We love doing these things and we love having the, the Q and A's and we'll, we'll, we'll do another one. The next one may still be in Mexico. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Unless it gets too hot. Unless and then it gets it's too like, hot time to get, we'll get out. out of here. But uh, <laughs> the water sports are amazing. The food is amazing. Or wait, no, there's, there's nothing to do here. The food sucks. Don't come. Yes. That's, don't, that's don't what we're going it. with. Don't do it. But we might come down next year to try it again. Just in case, just, to just yeah, if we it might has be changed. wrong, if it has changed, it's, yeah, if it's same. changed, it might be just a, but no, <laughs> love you guys so much. Mwah. And we'll see you guys in the next videos and stuff. And, uh, thanks for joining us and taking the time out of your busy schedules. You guys are amazing. I'm going to hit the button now. Bye guys. Bye. Time to have dinner. We have here. not eaten time to for dinner. No.